He's on the second best podcast in the it's world. It's the number one podcast in the world, actually. Second I best. I think yeah, I heard that that was an absolute lie when you guys No, said it's, a, it's, a, it's facts. Why would we lie? Uh, I heard that was Everything an absolute lie. Everything online is true. <laughs> That's true. That's how the internet works. Everything online is true. Everything online is true. But what's the actual number one podcast in the world? Joe Rogan. Oh, is he? The yeah. Roganator. I think it still is. I think he's close to us. Clo- close? Uh, he's close to us. Do you know his monthly downloads? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys. No, there's no cap. You you guys have one of the best podcasts, no doubt. Like I, I'm Dude, not. No shade. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh right damn. Now. Okay. I, I just don't want to go off. But uh, fun fact about that, I had no idea how big that show was yeah, until huge. after I got on. So wait, wait so. Because I've known you know Logan for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how you got on the show. Because originally, like, his boy Spencer was on the show. Yeah, there was Spencer and then Mac. Mac was on it. Right. Yeah, Who yeah. also did phot- photography and all that yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they got off. Yeah. And I, then- I, by the way, I never watched an episode. I never did. Like, you know, like, when your boy's with somebody. Can I just put this over? Yeah, When yeah, your boy's okay. with somebody, kind of like, I don't know. It's, just, it's not like it's weird not to watch, but, like. I have my own thing, and then when I see him in real life, that's enough. I don't want to go on like for an hour and watch yeah. my friends do things. So I, we don't really watch each other's content because we're just so involved in the content. Right. So uh, I never watched. Uh, I never really understood how powerful like that platform was at all. And um, I was one day just in the kitchen, and Logan's like, "Yo, just hop on, uh, just for one of the boys' thing." And then I loved it. It was like so fun, and it was yeah. just a vibe. Uh, and the audience really, um, they took to what I said and it was really, really cool. And then all of a sudden, like, dude, they were reposting my thing. Like I talked about God because that means a lot to me yeah. and, uh, it got reclipped. Like, dude, I was on, uh, I was getting text messages from people and all the reclips from it were like hundred thousand likes on there, 200,000 likes. And I was like, Oh great. None of my content is valid unless I get on this platform. And, Fuck. uh, and then, so I kind of just hung back, but in my heart, I was always like, damn, that was lit. That would be cool if I was on that show. Yeah. But never like was offered to me, nothing. Um, and then 6 9 was going to be on the podcast. And uh, Mac was like, you know what? It's not really for me. Like, I, I'm not really into the whole vibe of him. And like, uh, he just did it. Maybe he wasn't going to relate to him. I don't know. But it was just because that's how cool the podcast is. So if I told Logan, like, yeah, no, I don't drive with it. I'm not going to do this one. Uh, he'll be like, cool, because he wants it to be organic. He doesn't Absolutely. like pressure people. He doesn't like do anything with that. And so Mac was like, I'm out. And I was like, I'm in. I was like, yo, Logan, get me on this. Yeah. And he was like, nah, like he's like, this is a, this is going to be one of our biggest ones. It was. It was until the KSI one. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I told him, I, I looked at him with all confidence. I was like, bro, have I ever dropped the ball? Yeah. Have I ever like, have you ever put me on? And then I like failed to deliver. And uh and I could tell that him and, and Mike were like nervous, not nervous and like, uh, like, Oh, I don't know what to do. They were just kind of like, this is a big deal. He just got out of prison. Uh, everybody's already expecting it. Cause like, it kind of got leaked. Yeah. And, uh, I, I went on and it, it was, it was just, I, you know, it's so funny cause I was super nervous. If you watch it, like I didn't say anything at all. And then finally, like when he started cracking jokes and then I, I kind of like, I work off of laughs. So when yeah. I made everybody laugh, I was like, oh shit, I could do this. And yeah. then I went off towards the end. And, and then after that, Logan and Mike looked at me, they're like, dude, you have to be on the show. Yeah. So it was, no, it I was think a blessing. I think you're an amazing character, man. I mean, just in general on social media and, and as a human, like in, in fucking real oh, life, like you're that, just dude. a good dude. Like I would tell you guys right now, this guy, this guy literally would text me out of nowhere and be like, yo, I love you, man. I hope you're doing good. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. the kind of human being you are. I like to check in on my friends. And it's crazy. Cause like you be, I swear to God, that doesn't happen though. Most people don't do that. You know what I'm saying? They don't just check in, like, just randomly. Yeah. I mean, I, they might see you and be like, yo, man, I hope you've been doing good. Or how have things been? You have a conversation. But the random check-in, because, like, I hadn't seen you for a long time. You I, know? I, I agree. You know, it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. Uh, but I like to put into the world what I expect from the world. Yeah. So, you know, you are who you hang out with. So I keep myself around good people. And uh, when we hung out, uh, the little things mean a lot. They go a long way. And we were in Vegas. And you batch... And um, I think it was just us three, unless there was one other person. Oh, there was a girl. Yeah, Batch just hangs out with girls. So I think right, it was right, one right. of his Batch's girls. Okay. Uh, and uh, you were like, yo, let's go to Benny Hanna's. And you grabbed my shoulder. You're like, yo, it's on me. 
And as a Middle Eastern, I was like, bet. It's like, yo, he just got my meal. We're brothers. That's it. You know the Middle Eastern rules. You feed somebody, you love someone. So like, How I was like, oh, you shit. How you two known each other? Fuck. This is what we're going to talk. I wanted to talk about this, too. This is a good question. We, You know, our friendship started, and then it just kind of started sparking throughout time. And then it kind of just drived into our That's relationship. That's the best friendships, though. Like, yeah. ones where it just kind of happens organically, and you realize that your energies match each other. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, we yeah, figured yeah. it out when the first... So we got to... We gotta get to, we're getting into a lot of the things you do. Obviously, right now this is like a little like a, a little story time. Yeah, but yeah. The oh, first shit. time, <laughs> the first time. Okay, the first. I was this the first time we filmed content together. Was it inside the gym? Yeah, we oh filmed, my god, I forgot about was that. Was that the very first time? That was the first time we ever dapped up. Is that okay. was the first time met? we ever met. Yes. So the first time we met, this was. I had known tons of people in the in the influencer industry up until this point. Mm-hmm. We met, it was my gym. My gym had no equipment in it. It was when I first signed the lease and I was still building inside of the gym. So it was completely empty. It was a, it was a shell. It was too, it was super creepy. It was, <laughs> it was not that creepy. It was just, it was, the, it was a warehouse. Was anything, nothing. No, no, nothing. no, no, nothing. Like the floor was gone. There was like a, just a shell. And I was building the retaining wall in the front that, that holds like the, the merch and shit. Whoa. Right. And we were filming a skit for Anana yep. at the time. And it was like some, she, cause she used to do like a little more production stuff. So we had like these like people that weren't like influencers they were hired as like paid actors for that gig for that skit right yeah she went off bro like she she's like she didn't <laughs> yeah. want social media people in there because they were like yeah you're a bad actor she would cast people so like yes. there were extras is that a exactly. good word for it to bro. be like in your guys' actors. skits actors actors it was weird it. Yeah. low budget so, like, actors you sure. go up to girls at the gym and get free actresses this was yes. like a real production. yeah like like casted them <laughs> was like can you play this role <laughs> and so i had met him and I swear to God, the, the thing that I love so much about you is like, and I'll say this, I'll tell everyone this, I tell everyone this, you are so much f- like fun. It's like, I don't want to say more funny off camera, but like your natural personality, when even when there's nothing going on filming, like you're just hilarious, which oh, is I why that, when I saw, obviously we're going to get into this more, you started doing like stand up com- 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 comedian shit. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, this is like, you're meant for that shit. Cause when I first met you, we're filming this skit. And there's this lady, okay? There's a lady who was really mad. Karen. <laughs> Karen. It was total Karen who was mad that, like, we were just having fun because it was like, you know, the off times when you're done and everyone's so, you know, it's like when you're in school and everyone's supposed to be, like, quiet and then, like, you and your boy are like, like you look at like each other. And, and you're like, just... when, you, dude, when you try not to laugh, it's, Yo. it hurts it's, even you more. laugh even harder. You so, can't keep it in. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I just remember we're filming the skit and he, he, we had a scene where, like, this girl was, like, in my, in my stringer. Do you remember that? She was like upside down in my stringer or some shit. Yeah, like it was, was a, a very weird. Uh, it, it, I by the way, I never watched the final for, version of it. I didn't either. <laughs> He's I didn't like, either. I'm not did it ever come out? <laughs> I'm, yeah, it did. It did. It did. Okay. It did. I just remember me and you were in the back and they already asked us like 19 times to, to shut stop, the fuck yeah, up. They're, they're like, yo, stop. Quiet. And I couldn't because these jokes are just <laughs> flying. And uh, the girl who's mad at me the most is where my like inspiration came from. So yeah. like. I was like saying some shit and like, like I could be quiet, but he's such a big human <laughs> being so that like, look, look how subtle my laugh is like, right? Like that's subtle. Him, he's like, yeah, and, dude. and it's that's so not. distracting and she's not going to chirp at him. She's going to chirp she at him. She was me. chirping at him the whole time. And it was the funniest thing because I was like, yo, I got, he, he's, he has my back, right? Of course. Me and him versus everybody here square up. We won. Yeah. yeah easy, but game over. I think he was probably laughing at you, right? hundred percent. So okay, I was so like, bet, I'm go safe. The yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, this guy was seriously like jokes. And it was when they, right when they were like, all right, cut. That's when he was the funniest. And it was fucking me up. I was like, wait a minute. This shit's supposed yeah, to be no, on camera. No. Like, yo, what are you like? It wasn't even like we were doing our own thing on the back. And it was like, just random as fuck. And we're trying to film this skit. And then every time this guy would turn around, we were just joking about how the lady was so mad that we wouldn't shut up. And it was just so damn funny. Yeah. But we were, like, it was like wiping our tears. Like we couldn't breathe. Yeah. And watching her get more mad. And that's guys joke. So <laughs> mad. She actually paused in the middle of her thing. She goes, sorry, 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 sorry. Cut, cut, cut. And she looks at me. She goes, could you just be a tiny yeah, yeah. bit professional? So fucking serious. Tiny bit professional. Just a and I was, bit. And I'm thinking like. <laughs> that I turned to Brad. I go, who's getting paid? And you look. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, we just, this is social media. Like, yeah. what are you serious? Oh, and by the way, when we used to shoot skits, this is how we did it. We would like, in the in between, we just die of laughter because there's just a bunch of friends like shooting shit together. But yeah. that's the most relatable best part to like someone as a viewer. Like, I don't, I watch content. I don't make content. So like as a viewer, that's like relatable. Laughing with your friends and like cracking up over the dumbest shit. Like, that's what we want to see. We don't want to see this like weird organized content all the time so like cutting that is like a mistake we want to yeah. see you guys laugh 100 percent. i literally picked the most like non-influencer 
chick to become an influencer to be my co-host. <laughs> oh my god, where did so you guys meet? Where did you meet? How, where did you come from? Where do you think? Do you, you think look I was, like you just came out? Where of do like I meet a, everyone? Like a, like a box, like <laughs> like. I just got off work. I have a real job. <laughs> well, what do you do? So I'm a sonographer. So I do breast sonography. And so like you do porn. Sonography. You take you take porn. Lots picture. of porn. Yeah. Do you do OnlyFans? This is like a like a really this high is end. This like version? a weird way of me like plugging my OnlyFans. Do you no. have an OnlyFans? No. She does. Wait. So you take pics of boobs? Uh, all day. Yeah. But, but like whole, medically. Like, ask so, her like, though. Medically. Ask her. Like, would she do OnlyFans though? Ask her. Would you do OnlyFans? Oh, I'd pop my pussy on the internet for sure. Wow. But, like, wow. You went straight but, to. But I'll pop can, my. I mean, like, why no. can't you do both? Everyone's like, no. Like, you're in the medical field. Like, why can't I be? Both. Why can't I pop my pussy on the internet and then show up and take pictures? You know. Well, what was that? Well, what did you? Did you what's and that's the frame what I'm here? saying. I do both. When you scan, this is the motion, and when you, you know, this is the motion. You so. chose a great person. <laughs> this is amazing. And she could speak. What? You could Crazy. speak. She could speak amazing. Every she's once crushing in a while, yeah. I can no, speak. I don't mean like like obviously she's yeah, speaking. Yeah, no, women <laughs> but she's articulate. Talk. She's no, articulate. Oh, I totally know that. No. She's trying to get me. <laughs> no, she's articulate. On the no, box is like will than... fight men. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one I pick. Action figure. That's for sure the one I'm picking. It's better that way. Would I know you ever... we do more than getting lifted up in your videos. You know, know. we like can talk. You are really, you are really, you're selling this area, huh? This, yeah, I love this. Okay, Jesus. Sonography. Oh my God, Jesus. Would you, you ever do a great co-host? Would, <laughs> would you ever do uh, OnlyFans? Would I ever do OnlyFans? I already know, I think I already know the answer to this. Well, one. I have a membership club, bubbleclub.com. Oh OnlyFans, shit, that check shit them out. out. Club. Is I'm there sure. exclusive content? There is. Are I, you naked? I do, but not. I'm not naked. Oh. I, I'm not make. I, I I do like funny shit where I get really fucked fucking behind boring. and shit. Hey, and that's pretty much the same thing. It's it's a really fun job. I love my job. Um, but when you go in and get a mammogram, after that you can get an ultrasound. So I do ultrasounds. I do sonography. Got so it. I don't just do breasts, but I specialize in breasts. I do all parts of the body. I can scan Brad's boobs for gynecomastia. Are you familiar with gynecomastia? Uh, no, I don't think I have gynecomastia. Creaptia. <laughs> So that's just, kind of crap, you yeah. know, breast tissue under, you know, the male. Breast. I have none. Do you want to check you feel my boobs? Some? Do I feel, do I, am I healthy? I haven't worked out. Does he, was that no, like I'm a, just, he has a gyno? I'm just kidding. No, you don't. I don't think you have gyno. Well, actually, so most of my patients with gyno, how, they what all is, smoke weed. What, so if there's oh, a big, <laughs> I know. Oh, what is a gyno though? What is it? What is it like? It's the it? formation of breast tissue in the male breast. Oh, I have, I have nice boobs. Oh, okay, perfect. No, but it's like like boobs. And they're very painful, so it would be like painful to the touch. And you didn't, nah. you know, wince in pain. So let I don't. I wouldn't say you had gyno. Let me see. Let me check. Go ahead. Let me see. Okay. Oh. And even if you do have gyno, who nipple, cares? Right? Oh, like, yeah. Careful, right? Careful. Careful. That's sensitive. Yo, yeah. let me, let me. Hey, you know what's funny? Is if you were that, like, gentle, you're just such a big guy. Like, oh, so baby. Like. Brad is Brad is gentle. I he, am he, gentle. That was not you his natural habitat. You hooked up with your co-host? No. We did. Brad, No, you're lying. captain, dude. No, we're not. No, well, she's how captain. is he gentle then? He was real gentle. No, 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 no. That's Cap. I have not had sex with her. I have not had sex with her on camera. Mm -hmm. I haven't. On or camera. Off camera. Or off camera. He said, on camera. He said, I've never had no. sex with her on no. camera. No, no, no. Not on yet. camera, I want to make sure that they know I never had sex with her, period. But Yo, just you know, know he has we're going to drop an OnlyFans. We're going to drop right now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I knew that pretty Barbie style girl you have on with the yeah. booby picture thing. I knew you were having sex with her. <laughs> No, definitely not. You just seem really defensive. And no, I'm like not defensive. I'm not defensive. I feel like chemistry building here. No, it's because like my audience is going to be like, why don't you try to have sex with well, her? Your but audience like, thinks you sell drugs to kids. So I think true. you could. It's, yeah. I think you having sex with your co-host is the your least, least concern. Least your problems. Here. Yeah, at least I'm okay. <laughs> wow. All no, right. No, can't no. make those jokes. No, no, can't make those jokes. <laughs> 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 cannot make those jokes. Okay, but okay. Let's talk about it though. Because when I go to Google Bradley Martin, right? Okay. When And this happened at my work, okay? So when you look up. Probably a Hold year. On a oh, yeah, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ish, right? Sorry, so when when I had done my first video with Brad, I was an intern, okay, and I was in, in school. So when I had posted the video, it had gone viral. A bunch of my people that I um, that go to school with, my teachers had seen the video. They pull me into the office and they tell me, "Hey, um, you're gonna have to go out and start like trying to get a job now." Um, and when they look up like your social media and your name, it's associated with Bradley Martin and like. When you look in his comments and like through his page, it, it, people are making fun of him for being a drug dealer and mm -hmm. underage jokes. They're like, that's so just stupid. not a good look for when you're trying to get a job. Like, you know, so that's kind of what they said to me. But I mean, who gives a shit? Like, it's the Internet. OK, just let me let's explain. So, so I feel like we need your, to pop this video up. You're you're changing. Um, your no, we can't. No, we totally can't. Yeah. But if you want to go to only just talk, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I don't have, wait, there's wait, no wait, 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 not yet. Not but yet. Somebody not yet. please explain. OK, to me. I was going to say, let's explain. So okay. I had gotten a flat tire, right? So I go to the tire shop, go to get my tire changed. Done. I go into the tire shop and 
I go to the tire shop, this tire shop all the time. It's my frequent tire shop. Where do you drive? It's the same guy <laughs> in Audi, but I hit fucking curbs. Me and, yeah, it happens, you know, yeah. it happens. Anyway, so I uh, go to get my tire changed. I go to see the man that I always see. He wasn't there. Instead, it was a different man. So he comes up to me. He tells me that the price of my tires is going to be $350. I'm like, all right, that sucks, but whatever. I go sit in his office. He goes and puts my tires on. He comes back. He's like, hey, I'll give it to you for half off if you give me a hug. I'm like... Fuck it. A okay, hug? this sure. is getting weird. Dude. Listen, I, it got weird. It got worse. I saw the video. Yeah, it got worse. So I was like, but fuck it. A hug? Sure. I don't give a shit. This man, you by the way. You didn't negotiate? You hey, no, 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 no. Listen. No, no, listen. listen. No, no, listen. She did negotiate. But okay. And for context, this man, he was smaller than me. So it's like, if anything were to arise, I was pretty confident I could beat his ass. So I was like, all right, fuck it. A hug is fine. So <laughs> then he goes out, he finishes my car, comes back, and he's like, if you flash me your titties, you can have it for free. I was like, yep. Yo. Right. So I set my phone up, I saw that, yeah. flash my titties. And you know, I understand why men hate women because it's like, if you were to walk into a tire shop, you're going to pay $350. Me, I just had to flash my titties and the tires were free. And my tits aren't even nice. Like that's the, that's the best part. He, like, you have a nipple piercing though. That's why he wanted to see it. I guess, but it's like yeah. at the end of the day, I'm someone who's, I'm confident in my body. I fucking, I look at boobs all day. I, that's nothing to me. If you're someone, if you're a woman who would feel uncomfortable with that don't do it tell them to fuck off call the police me at 350 dollar titty flash i'm doing that i'm doing that thank you what would you do for rotation tires a tire, <laughs> a tire rotation <laughs> <You're fucking laughs> what would you i no. want to know what you do for an oil change okay no. <laughs> no i do need my oil change too so oh he did that too no. yeah, oh my no. god but i mean at the end of the day like he didn't he didn't touch me he got i flashed my titties they're a, not even 30 seconds, probably one second interaction, free tires. So I didn't feel bad about that. Well, now, if you lit. asked for a blowjob, I would have been offended. Because, I mean, at that point, I have to touch you. That's an intimate I experience. feel like this is a slippery slope, though. It's like It is a slippery slope. Nice. But it's, that's why I said Great it matters it is, right? who Great you words. are. If you're a woman who would feel offended by that and when who mm. wears just like, oh, hell no, call the police. Like, do that. So I'm just someone so who's down for some free tires for a titty flash. Like, and that's who I am. And I know there's a lot of women who would relate. And I think Brad, if you were to go into a tire shop and he said, if you show me your titties, you can have this for free. I think you would do it. I think you show your dick for some free tires. I think you would too though. Oh, for sure. What? Right? It depends how cold it is in that room. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm always showing my shit if that's the best. You but know then what I mean? like, why do you like, do you have to show up, show out? I mean, it's always, just, it's just a always flash all about reputation. Tires. What if I go to discount tires? You think I'm going to fucking whip out in a cold room? Nah. Hey, no. I mean, I'm glad you care about, you know, what he sees or the tire man sees. I want to throw woman. it down so nice that he's like, fuck it, throwing a spare because that it's, shit's... As you should. As you should. Up, run run it up. Up. As you I'll should. take one of the fucking air freshers too, all right? Exactly. <laughs> Let's go. Exactly. Let's fucking go. You so you guys know. would do it. You guys would do the same thing I did. Uh, uh, what, are you in a relationship? No, I'm single. I bet. I probably would. Honestly, I would be fucking so... B oh, wait, hold on. It depends because like I, I took an hour out of my day to like sit there and click not interested in every girl that like was on my shit that was like too much. Wow. And then I mute girls that I follow that are like too much about that shit. And wow. what is the association? I'm just curious because I'm not religious. Not that I, I just don't have a lot of knowledge and I'm honestly ignorant to religion to be uh, honest. Yeah. So, so what is the association with um, not liking or clicking uninterested to these women's photos and God? Uh, it's, it's wildly different. Like, cause so how do I put this? Uh, I grew up Catholic. Right. And then I, I, grew, I did too. I grew up Catholic. Yeah. In a Syrian Catholic. So it, I don't want to get into that. Uh, but I grew into my own religion, uh, not my religion, my relationship with God. And through this, uh, just like any relationship with your co-host or your, uh, if you have a boyfriend or mm -hmm. a parent, when it grows in a strong way, you kind of want to keep it. you right. Cause it's, mm -hmm. it's healthy. Absolutely. So about like a year and a half ago or two years ago, um, I really stepped up and was like, yo, I'm going to, I'm going to really dedicate my life to make sure that I'm, I'm doing all that I could do like me as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Uh, and all of a sudden every, everything in my heart desire just started dropping into my lap, like all of my dreams and everything. Wow. So I was like, wow. I was like, if I really show him that I'm trying to be a good son, I get rewarded. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, around that time, uh, out, out of all the blessings that fell into my lap, uh, my girlfriend fell into my lap. And in that process to show him that uh, I want to keep this relationship healthy, instead of me uh, going on porn when she's traveling or anything like that, I'm trying to teach myself that I'm only with one girl. And through this process of making him uh, proud, mm -hmm. it's actually phenomenally like helped me in my relationship because 
when more of the success came, there was a lot more girls that I thought would never in a million years ever show me interest started like nonstop coming at me. And if I didn't already prep myself to say like, no, 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 I'm okay with that. Like yeah. I got myself a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, I think money and fame could really destroy a relationship. Absolutely. So I kind of just, I, I end it there. If, uh, if a girl's being disrespectful, I just kind of be like, Hey, you know what? Uh, I think this conversation is over. Yeah. Uh, and I think truly if two years ago or a year and a half ago, I didn't train my body as a man to be like, all right, enough of that. Mm -hmm. Cause dude, I don't care what anybody says. Porn's an addiction, bro. Like yeah. it, it is an addiction. Addiction. Or, I mean, sex yeah. at, at, in a whole. Like, sex. Yeah, I didn't cut that out. That's still an addiction. No, but... <laughs> no, I ain't finding that one. <laughs> it's not an addiction, but it is if you're... Like you said, if your girlfriend's out of town and you feel the need to, you know, have those sexual desires, it does feel like an addiction at that point because, yeah. like, you know, you, you want to be loyal to this person, but there's, like, that urge in you to not be or to step out of a boundary that you set for yourself. And it sounds like religion kind of, like, taught you a lot about yourself and you were able to, like create self-growth and that's a big part of why you're able to like conduct such a healthy relationship with your girlfriend yeah yeah no definitely i just wanted to ask like what were those things that you felt were coming into your life when you like went to that side where you're like okay i'm, I'm dedicating myself to god in your perspective yeah. in your view what started coming to your life that wasn't coming before i'm just curious yeah uh i, I could give you a ton um so just in this year man like i my movie came out uh and when I, when I went for that movie, I went on a day that I was already fasting. So there, there, it, he times the, uh, okay, how, how do I put this? Cause it, it, it does, it is I mean, hard to itself, express. I mean, the fact that you were in a movie is like Oh no, in this, incredible. in one year that I, I gave it all to him. So eight years of being here, um, eight years of being here and working hard and working hard and putting myself first, putting him on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, I'm going to do my thing. And then when I have time, I'm going to put you first mm -hmm. or, or, or bring you up. And then one day, uh, it was like two, two, two two and a half years ago. Uh, I had a lot of money and I have a lot of success that, but I was still finding uh, depression. Mm -hmm. Not, and I'm not a depressed person. So I was like, yo, that's weird. Cause when I was flipping burgers at five guys in in Arizona and I was broke as shit, I was abundantly happy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, cool. And I like to self reflect. So I, I always write what my feelings are and I, and I reflect on them. And I was like, okay, cool. Maybe it's because mm -hmm. my true happiness is with God and God alone. Mm -hmm. I could be happy flipping burgers with God on my side. And if I could be having all the supermodels or, or all the money, but mm -hmm. with no God, it's like there's no purpose because I've literally been around billionaires that are lost. Absolutely. And you, you know more than anybody yeah. around these influences that they, they go on the gram and they're like, yo, my life's great. They put that on and we all know. What's oh, yeah. really it's, going it's on? Not, yeah. So I just, I took accountability. I was like, yo, no one's going to take care of me. So I like sat with like me and myself and honesty is a very big thing. Mm -hmm. And I always bring my parents involved in everything I touch. Mm -hmm. So I brought it up to them and they were like, my mom was like, listen, I'll tell you this over and over again until you bang your head against the wall and you're, you're going to open your eyes and see like the days that you're really happy is the day you wake up and you put God first. So, uh, I kind of, I just finished shooting my movie around that time. And I was like, all right, uh, I'm going to put him first seriously. Then what does that look like though? Yeah. So, okay. So like, the, the look like is like before I wake up and touch my phone and check how many people are in my DMs or how much likes I have. See yeah. my, my, that is uh, my idol became social media. So now Damn. I don't touch my phone. Sounds when like I, my life. But I wake up, I'm like fucking internet immediately to that. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, and then, so, sorry, my brain is all over cause I want to make sure I say this properly. So. I wake up before I do anything. I thank him for waking up. And then I ask him for the day's work. So I ask him to give me strength, wisdom, faith, and knowledge to take the days on for what it is. I don't want him to make my day easier. I want that shit to be hard, but I want the strength to carry on with that. And then with a year of doing that, my movie came out. It did so well that the writers and producers bought the movie that I wrote. From there, I went on to Impulsive. And before I went on Impulsive, I asked God to, to speak through me and make sure that I could speak with some type of knowledge. And then the audience loved me so much that I got welcomed on. And then that was right around the time my movie came out. So then I announced my movie. It crushed. And then they bought the movie that I wrote. Now we're going on to that. Yeah. Invited a guy that I looked up to. And I was like, yo, I want to be like that. And instead of me just being wanting it, I prayed for it. He became a, a guest on Impulsive. And then looked at me and then all of a sudden wanted to mentor me. And then from that opened up this door for stand up. 
And then so now, I, and then and then uh, and then you know, it's so funny because I always I'm overthinking. I always think everybody. Yeah, and too. Logan, literally, we had a, an argument. We literally got an argument. He looked me in the eyes and he's like, "Yo, you're too grateful, bro." He's like, "You thank me way too much." He's like, "You're doing your own thing," and I told him, "I go see that right there. It, it that's the disagreement that I'll have with everybody, because." Even though it was him, right, that put me on, yeah. if it wasn't him, God would have put somebody else, like Joe Coy or Andrew Schultz that welcomed me onto their stage. There's so many people that could have opened that door for me. But if I can't show God how grateful I am for what he's already done in my life, then as a father, if I had a son and I gave him a gift and he didn't appreciate it, why would I want to give him more? Absolutely. Yeah. So I take that to consideration. So I thank him for everything. I actually, believe it or not, this is my most successful year I've ever had in one year, in 12 months, I've made more money and more success than I've done in eight years. I love it. You ready for this? I swear to you, this is not a lie, bro. For one year now, I've never asked God for a thing. For one year since? I've never asked God for a thing. I do not ask God for anything. I ask him to put what he thinks is good for me in front of me. That's it. And then I work so, hard as fuck. So this is the thing I want to, uh, this is the challenging part, right? Yeah. Um, because obviously there's people out there who don't believe in God in of the course. same sense. Of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a relationship. Do, right. Do you think that you sitting in the morning and saying, God, what is there for me? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah Those yeah. moments. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's also a practice of intention and in bringing things into your life? Because, because, because now you're putting that, that, that open, that, that willingness, that energy out there in yeah, yourself. Yeah, 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 like yeah. a process of like self -work. Like calling it out like into existence. Like affirmation mm -hmm. and all these things so every morning, right? I do Bible study, right? Okay. Uh, and when I do Bible study, I truly look at the word of God and I break it down. I'll take a verse and I'll really sit there and it's so deep, bro. There's so many things that we read that we just read. And I talk to Christians and they go, yeah, if it means uh, I could do all things through God who strengthens me. And it's like, bro, you guys sound like parrots. You guys don't even know what the word is. And I noticed I would call things into existence. I would literally, Logan even called this out. I will literally, and you could ask him, I say things and they will happen. And so I was like, yo, that's crazy. Cause I literally been doing it like a lot. So I was like, where did this come from? And then everybody was like, oh, you call it into the universe. So I was like, all right, well, how do I bring this out in a biblical term? And then I read the Bible. I literally asked God, I was like, yo, am I, if I'm on the right track, show me. And then randomly I opened up to the first page and it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And he said, let there be light. And he said that we're made in his image. And then I learned how your mouth could call into so many things. And then after I learned this, I started looking around the people that I was with. The person who's depressed always said he's depressed. The person who's successful is like, man, I'm going to kill it today. And I was like, whoa. So we're made in his image. And we literally were taught that anything you say, you will bring it upon yourself. Mm -hmm. And now people are saying this, it's like calling into the universe. This reminds doing me, all that's what I'm saying, intention. This reminds me of a trippy mushroom trip that I had. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, my second mushroom trip. I, I, mean, I took a mushroom trip once and I was like, I, I literally started weeping because I put all my problems on a table and then I solved them out. But again, dude, it's, I, I tell this to people all the time. Like I could never sit in front of the camera and have somebody on the other screen believe in God as much as I can because they're never going to have this relationship, right? Right. Because I, I put time into it. I'll text you and be like, yo, man, how's your day? Are you good? I'm putting time in this relationship. People can't even put time in their own relationships. So these people are greedy. They're selfish. All they want is them. So when I try to explain to them that you being with God is a working relationship, you have to do your part too. But basically, this is how I explain it to everybody. Uh, if you're driving your car, before yeah. you bought the car, right? You're like, dude, this, this car's sick. Nobody has it. Like, this is my car. Nobody has it. And then you get into this after you invested in it. And then everyone's got the same Everybody has car. the car. Yeah. <laughs> but That's my point goes, is dude. this. You start noticing. It's also like on GTA when you have the car that you want. Yeah. And they always, everyone else has the same car, but when you don't have the car, you can't find it. But why is that? So this is, I, I don't know, dude. But why is that? Because what energy? Because the are fucking you algorithm on GTA, it? what do you well, mean? I, I <laughs> like, that's why, dude. That's the answer. It's a computer program. God had nothing We're to do like with it. I hate to talk. He's like, no, I, GTA algorithm. No, he, he dumb, know, this bro, guy knows what sense. I'm talking about. <laughs> it's because that's how it works. I, I, well, I mean, but go you, ahead. You, let's no, okay, let's okay, get deeper on it. Okay, we get deeper on it. I truly feel with my heart, mind you, I might not be right, but I feel like it's because we invested in it. But isn't this the beauty I of life? I agree with you. You so, invest in it. So you put time and energy into So now you're going to start noticing it. So if you put time and energy into God, you will start noticing him do work in your life. But do you think that to get the abundance of, you know, like positivity that you've had and wealth and everything, do you think that you need 
God to do that or you just need to have the intention and to speak it out into the world in a general sense like do you think that that is something that you need God to do because like I said I'm ignorant on religion I have not yeah. um, done a lot of research on it I do believe in manifestation I believe the energy I put onto the world is the energy I receive I believe what I speak into the world whether it's good or bad is the energy I will get back yeah. um, so I'm just wondering if you believe that the uh, you know the gift that you receive from putting out work and putting out positive energy is only through God or if you think it can just be you know if you putting if you're putting out good energy and if you're putting out like hard yeah work. and this is what I'm trying to challenge you to like oh, where is the thing that. where you're like yo this is I I feel like from obviously your own perspective yeah, yeah. this is God acting on, God, on yeah, my part Mind you, anybody who's listening, I'm not a priest. so like, No, of course. To, please don't take my uh, all of No, this, this is just, just your my personal heart. experience. My, my personal experience. Yeah. So my personal experience with this situation is this. Um, my God is a perfect God, mm -hmm. right? So when he says something and he does something, it, it, it's not like a human where it can be taken and back and forth. So if he says, if you do this, this will happen. Mm -hmm. So I find this to be so cool to watch other people that don't know who God is do God's work. And God will say, if you do this, this will happen. And I would watch it from other people. I fell in love with God because I knew the word growing up and I was very observant. I like to people watch. So I literally watched the people do God's work and not know who God is and get his blessings that he promised you if you do it. So I'm like, bet. I was like, these people don't even know how they're getting it. I'll give you an example. Uh, I can't say names, but I'll, I'll say there's a social media guy uh, and he had issues with his father. Okay. But he never badmouthed his father, ever. And his childhood growing up, bro, was so unbelievably crazy that I was like, wow, he never bashed his father. And biblically, you're not supposed to bash your father, regardless of what he did to you. So this guy, dude, if you see what he has in his life now, like Lambos on Lambos, Ferraris on Ferraris, like everything, and he's such a good person. We were in a drive through and he turns to the guy, and he goes, hey, could you buy the, the next two people behind me? And I go, why'd you do that? He goes, oh, uh, I don't know, man. Ever since I was a kid, I like to give mm -hmm. a lot. But I don't like to tell people. I like to keep it between me. In, in the scripture, it says, if you want, um, uh, there's only one place in the Bible where it says you could test me. Ever. Oh, what the fuck? My bad. Um, and he goes, if you give your 10%, your tithes. Mm -hmm. He goes, I will give you more. Because as humans, we're greedy. We don't ever want to give. What a portion, yeah. especially when you have a job that you're not working paycheck to paycheck. It's like commission. So you don't even know what you're going to have and how long you're gonna, it's going to last. So I was sitting with this billionaire and we're overlooking this whole view. And I looked at him, he's a super Christian guy. And I, and I asked him, I go, you, you grew up poor. How do, how do you have all this? He goes, you want to be rich. He goes, give 10% to others, but don't let anybody know. He goes, do it for the glory of God, not for you. He goes, and watch what God will do for you. That was at the beginning of the year. And this year has been the most successful year of my life. So, so it's talking about giving in silence. You have to. This hand shouldn't know what this hand do. If you're going to give something to somebody and then go on social media or go tell your friend or even or your parent or anybody, you now just took credibility for that. Mm -hmm. You're like, that's me. I did that. But if you do it, and when I do do it, I do, hey, this ain't from me. God put it in my heart to do it for you. So this is from God. This ain't for me. Don't even thank me. I don't even want the thanks. You do that. So if there is a God, say hypothetically, mm -hmm. for people that don't exist, that people think that he doesn't exist, right. that's a great way to see if he does exist. Because if he says, test me, isn't that like a great way to see if there's a God? Because if you're going to give out and monitor it, bro, because I monitored it. I watched that. If you watch how when you go out into the world and you do that, wouldn't if there is a God, hypothetically, wouldn't he want to give you more because he knows that you're taking care of good people? Wouldn't he want to put it in your lap? Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. Yeah, I don't so disagree. like there's there's ways to test it. It's you do these things, does it have to be God? Or can it be just like, can you believe in something else? But do everything you're saying, you know? Um, give without, you know, asking for anything. Oh, of course. Yeah, there's a, there's a ton of good. But okay, again, I'll give like, you one I, example. I Logan. agree with everything you say. I just don't, I'm not saying I don't believe in God. I'm just saying I don't practice religion. I yeah. just, I manifest things. I speak things out. I give without asking for things to be received. And I do feel like my life has been, you know, filled with a lot of abundance that I like had no idea I would ever get. And it only happened once I started doing these things. Um, so I, I agree with you. And I, I just didn't. 
and I, I you're saying that you're do, I'm doing it in a not knowing that it's because of God and I and I don't believe in God in a way because I just I'm ignorant to it yeah, yeah um so I'm just I guess our question I think Brad's thinking the same thing is like yeah. if you put all this work that you're saying in do you think it's possible the same outcome would happen or it, do you it think will it will it, you it. don't have to believe in God for it to happen because let me give an example if I'm the creator of a vending machine and mm -hmm. I told you the rules are if you put money into this you'll get a snack uh, regardless if you believe in me or not, it's I created happen. this machine. It's going to work this way. I see what you're so saying. So regardless if you believe in God or not, like one of the people that I looked up to was Logan. Logan d did so much for people and did not ask for anything, did not know. Like you wouldn't know. Like you had to be an eyewitness for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And then you sit back and you're like, this motherfucker just made another million dollars off this shit. Like how does that happen? I truly believe in my heart. This dude is such a good dude. He doesn't do it for glory or anything. He already has a fucking glory. He's famous as fuck. Does he believe in God? I'm just curious. Does he he believe believes in a higher power. We have these conversations yeah. all the time. Got it. But I tell him all the time. I go, yo, like, I, I like between us, we get deep in things. And I'm like, yo, you did this, and this, this was happening, and this happened. Mm -hmm. well, and so we go back and forth on it all the time. I have the same, I have, similar to Logan, I have the same feeling. It's hard for me to say, like, there is a God 100%. Yeah. Because I grew up Catholic. I but I do believe 100% without a doubt yeah. that if you live your life in a way and you're, you're putting good into the world, like genuinely and caring yeah. about that, that you do receive it back. I feel like it comes down to genuine intentions. Mm -hmm. because I think it's your heart, man. And that's why God doesn't judge your actions of your past. And that's why I, I look at everybody the same way that I want God to look at me when it's time that I look at him for judgment. Like I want to be as forgiving and I want to forgive everybody. This past week, I actually literally made it an effort that I call people from years ago and try to build that relationship back. And by the way, I'm not saying you should bring everybody in your life because some people are toxic. You shouldn't for let sure. people That's in your life, sure. but you should never have hatred in your heart, bro. No, I think it comes down to true intentions because people ask me all the time, like in, in, in real life at the gym, they're like, yo, how do I get this? How do I achieve that? And I always say like, well, the thing that you're going for right now, what is it? They'll answer it, right? Yeah. And I'm like, is that the thing you really want? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, what do you really want? Well, I want to do this. I'm like, yeah. okay, start doing that thing. And this is why I'm bringing it up in relationship to this, this conversation about God peace. Cause I, what I'm saying from a different perspective than like, uh, like a true believer, like you, I guess you'd probably call yourself, right? As, in, as I just God. have a relationship with God. That's all yeah. that is. So I believe in God in a sense, maybe mm -hmm. not the same way biblically, like f from reading the Bible or, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, but I do believe like if you put your effort and your energy genuinely towards something that you, you're truly passionate about and care about yeah. and, and care for like in caring for others, whether it's, you know, on on the scenes on a camera off the camera like i just genuinely believe like if you care like in your heart if you're going this is truly who i am yeah and this is truly what makes me happy and i'm stepping towards that mm -hmm. whether it be like making a relationship better building a business building a friendship like anything yeah. going towards this like career path going towards like this sport i think those are the people who truly succeed in those things whether or not they're relating it to god or not and that's the question that i'm trying to pose to you is like do you think that you could have had this and maybe not you specifically because yeah, obviously yeah this is where you're at in your life and this is, you know, you believe this. Oh, do you think I'd be as successful? If, if oh, I'll be more successful right now. Would you be, that's what I'm asking. Oh you. yeah. I'd be way more successful right now. If, if, I, if I didn't choose to be with God, I've turned down millions of dollars because I know that God wouldn't be upset. It didn't, yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Bro. I'll be wildly, but I'll be wildly depressed. You don't think you can find a balance. I will. When God thinks I'm able to have what my heart desires right. in the time where he's trained me. In, bro, my, you don't like think I had you're... anger issues growing up, bro. And now it's, you can't get me angry. It's I like know, very I, hard. I remember he was always talking about fighting. It's so oh, funny. bro. I got <laughs> so many fights growing up. Yeah. So many fights. Like I, I was an angry person. And if I would have had that anger in my heart while I had the money and fame, bro, I would have fucked somebody up. Yeah. You if I always... knew I could hire a good lawyer, I would have probably destroyed somebody. <laughs> Like le legit. Anyone on your hit list? Anyone who was on your who's the biggest on your hit list? You nobody, have any, bro. No one. I have nobody on my hit list now. Then. Like no, literally then. then. Oh, like now? Like, Dude. Then, then in the past. Bro, you know I got moved out of school. They moved me out of school because they try to beat me up every day. So there's no influencer boxing matches coming. Is that what so we're talking about? Nah, nah. nah <laughs> none for you. Nah, I'm trying to take over these arenas for stand up. I'm no, not trying I love to do it. that. Dude, I honestly believe like you're built for that shit. Straight up, it. you're yeah. built for that. It, 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 dude, it's definitely like a whole different path. But before we hop off, I, ha I actually had to ask you something. Um, before you worked out, before you you got your muscles, yeah. What was the first thing you did? The first thing I did, business wise. No, no, no. I'm just saying before you got your muscles, because I feel like that's where your heart is, right? You like to work on your physique. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's a rep it's a representation of who I am. But before you had your whole brand and who Bradley was, you worked on your physique. What was the first thing you did? In the gym or in life? In life. To get your results where you're at, what was your first step? Start. 
But what start. was it? How did you start? Like what got me started or how, how did I start? I mean, I just got in the gym. Like, how did you start? I was playing sports and I was like, I love working out. Okay. So it's, it's much deeper than that though. Like what got me hooked is a whole different question, right? Well, not even that. I just say like, what, like, what was your first attempt? Like, was it like knowledge based? Like I want to learn how to do this or was it like, I'm just going to hit it and try to do it. Um, well, originally it was sports and then I was lifting and I was like, whoa, I like the way this makes me feel. Got Bob. That's all I need to know. So this, he, this yeah. is what I need to get at. Uh, right here, what you just said. So when's the last time realistically you opened up the Bible and read it? Man, it's been a long time. Cause I, yeah, I, like I said, I grew up Catholic church, went to school my whole life. But okay. But when you were a kid, that wasn't you. No, no, I no, guarantee no. that was no, like no, your no. mom and dad. hundred like, percent. It was like, you have to do this. Go to yeah, church, go to Bible exactly. stuff. So this stuff. is where, this is why I, I like, I, I don't like Catholic schools, bro. I don't like youth stuff. I don't like, because what it is, it's like you're throwing kids into the fire and they don't, they can't, they don't even have the, the not even will or the it. knowledge to consume it. Right. And all you do is hit them with rules. And regulations. And that's all they hear is the, the rules and what they can't do. And then do. they get scared, bro. Yeah. So yeah. The, that's what happened the, to my me. luckiest thing that ever happened to me is, bro, like I really didn't give a fuck growing up. Like I didn't give a fuck about anything, bro. Sounds like me. Like I didn't. Except the gym. Yeah, but I didn't give a fuck. I, I had no fear, bro. Like they, they were like, if they're like, we're going to suspend you right now. There was one time I was in school. They're like, we're going to suspend you. I was already out the door. Like I was gone. I, was, I didn't care. So when I like got into my relationship, and I opened up the Bible and I learned for myself. I was like, ah, I bet this is dope. This is like, this is just like reading a book. Like in class, they'd be like, you got to read this book. You're like, fuck that. I don't want to read this book. But yeah, when but you I'm want, dyslexic as shit. And bro. when you want to read the book though, like when you're, when you're willing to be ready to yeah. read that for book. Yeah, your intention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. That's what I keep coming down to this. Like, is it just your, your own personal willingness and readiness to like receive and no, to be open? It was strictly selfish actually. Like I dead ass wanted to own this earth, bro. I wanted everything about it. I was like, oh, I'm going to get rich as fuck. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I was like, bet if there's a God, I bet he'd be the one to get me there quicker. And so like I started Whoa, reading. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so that's I started, really interesting. Yeah, dude, I took that shit for like, I'm like, yo, if he's all knowing, bet, give me that shit. You're I want to like, know. I want to know. Yo, so like it, it was greed, bro. And I went yeah. in there and I was like, blah, blah, blah. And then. You're like, who's the right? giver in the room? I'm going to go to him. I'm going to yeah. go find the giver. 100%. <laughs> I, I like that. Straight up, like I want this earth. I've always wanted a lot out of this earth. And so when I read this i was like bet and he, as a young kid growing up as a teen i guy was straight up telling me he's like yo if you're chasing money you're chasing your own death like you're, yo, that's a fact. you're gonna be Absolutely. miserable that's and i'm watching fact. people in my life open up like once a week a six-figure check and in their tear would hit that check and not happy tears they're just depressed so when you see like if somebody gives you something and you read it and you're, that's going to stick with you regardless, it could be a false religion, it could be a false God, it could be whatever it is. But if you read something and they're like, this is going to happen if it happens and then you watch that shit, you're like, all right, bet. So how many times is this going to tell me something that actually does happen in my life where I'm just going to be an idiot and just completely like get rid of it? So then again, I got greedy, bro. So I, I was like a good Christian kid in Hollywood, right? I did pretty well seven years out here, but then I was like, how do I get more? <laughs> And God said, he goes, if you ask for me, I'll give you your heart desires. I was like, bet. So like, okay, I'm only asking for what you want. And then my whole life changed after that. Asking what he wanted for yep. you. Because then I found out, bro, ready for this, bro? I, the year that I asked him that I don't want, I, like, what do you want from me is the year that I, I all of a sudden started doing something. So, okay, back. okay. So wait a minute. And I didn't so, even know I was going to do that. So now we are not talking about intention because you're telling me you woke up in the morning and you're like, what do you want from me? You didn't say. No. So you, like, give me or like, just give me what you have for me. Give me what I deserve. It wasn't like. What like, do you think I deserve for what I'm doing? Right. Is so I ask for, for, uh, for like tools in life. Right. So I can't see the future. Of course. I can't see the future. None of us can. So I'm expecting God to see this future. There's actually a Bible verse. Half of your viewers are tuned up. Now. <laughs> They're like, I don't give a fuck. Amazing. Yeah, I yeah. love this shit. I love this shit. Uh, so there's a, there's a Bible verse that I got me hooked when I was a kid. And it was about a, a guy who was blind. And he said, uh, Jesus, I know if you just touch me, I will have sight. And he spit into, Jesus spit into the dirt and took mud and uh, put it on this man's eyes. Which, by the way, I thought that was gangster when I read that. I was like, damn, you're just going to spit in dirt <laughs> and rub mud on some dude's <laughs> eyes? I'm like, yo, that's a God I can get down with. He's hilarious. And so he goes, walk to the river and wash your face and you will have sight. And I'm reading the Bible, bro, and I'm like, yo, anybody concerned about how he just asked a blind dude to walk to the river? Yeah, like, 
I'm dying of laughter. But then I thought about it. I was like, oh, dude, this relates to me. How? Because if I can't trust God to see things I can't see in the future, I'm a blind man when it comes to the future. I just got to trust God. So when I trusted God and I was like, all right, I don't know where I'm going to go in my life. I don't know what I'm doing. So here's my, here's my thing. Is yeah. that also not trusting in yourself? Because you're trusting in yourself to allow yourself to step closer towards whatever that is coming. I, I trust me less than I trust God. Yeah, of course. He's, he's all knowing. If, 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 for example, if God, if God exists. Right. But yeah. you, you trusting in God, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's not a man that's going grabbing your hand and saying, hey, come here, walk this way with no, me. No, never, never. Actually, it's, every single Bible verse, every single verse that's like outstanding. Like when I brought up the Lazarus one, he stood by the gate. He didn't even walk in. He made the family come out and greet him. But this is what I'm saying. It's like, is that not then just you walking? Yeah, but yeah, of course. Because right. remember, and this is the craziest part, because everybody always like gets mad. Well, if God is blah, blah, blah. Well, then why did so-and-so pass away? Or if, like, why would I my bankrupt? It's like, yo, like God gave you free will, homie. Right. Like it's, how is he going to give you free will and then take that away from you to make you make the right decision? If you had a kid right now and the doctor came in and was like, yo, we'll inject this. Oh, I shouldn't say that right uh -oh, now. Uh-oh, yes. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, uh, we'll give this baby a pill. Yeah, okay. Uh, and this baby <laughs> is forever going to do anything you say. Would you want that? Fuck no. No, because you're like, Fuck dude, no. this bitch doesn't love me. I just pilled him. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. So like, this is the relationship with God. But here's the thing, and I'll, and I'll say this again. This is a case-by-case -case situation. Um, I just say try. What is the harm in trying? Bro, before I got into Christianity, I read so many other religions. I read so many religions. But through reading them, I had no like gut, like, yo, this is it for me. Like, this is it. But then when I opened up the Holy Bible... And I read it and then I used and implemented, implemented that into my life. And I saw the results. I was like, all right, bet. This is what, this is it for me. This is right. what I, I find my happiness. And, and, and by the way, I don't think anybody should go into the Bible being like, I'm going to get the most out of life from this, blah, blah, blah. I just like, I think right now is the perfect time for people to like dabble in it because a lot of people are depressed. Yeah. And even if you could just chase a little bit of happiness reading that, just a tiny bit. It could change your life. It could change your life completely. And God forbid, bro, God doesn't exist. I, I, we get after, we're both dead. And I <laughs> yeah. see you in the afterlife and you're jacked as fuck. Like, Son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, fuck, yeah. all of that. I wouldn't. Yeah, I know. Because every decision that I made so far in my life, trying to please a higher being made my life okay. significantly better. This is so this is where I'm at with literally what you just said. Yeah. I just literally talked to a kid yesterday, 2 days ago, filmed a YouTube video about it. Yeah. This is what I keep coming back to. That is you acting, not and and, and this is not me telling you because this is however you see it is how you see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you acting in your genuine like happiness and what genuinely makes you happy and what yeah. genuinely like drives you it makes you feel good and, and like challenges you and you go towards it right yeah, yeah yeah that's you doing that in my opinion no matter what so it is it's kind of because i tell it's kids just that all the amplifier time. so i love performing i love doing stand-up i love uh writing movies i love um uh performing in general right that is my love dog like i i would die if i can't do that right so when i went into this industry seven years ago eight years ago if i would have done it the way i wanted to do it Say I could just have a genie, for example, right? You rub a genie, get all my wishes. Bro, I would truly, with all my heart, me, I would have been a terrible person. Like a terrible, greedy fucking person. Because then I would have learned from my surroundings of snapping necks, breaking people's backs, uh, uh, stepping on heads to get to where I want, because right. that's how my surrounding does it. But you even said in the beginning of the podcast, you were like, yo, um, you text me to see how I did. And that, and that left something in your heart. So now when you see me, you're like, dude, that kid's a good person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how sick would that be if I could get the best of both worlds? I could be a good person and on top. So what I'm saying is you having your relationship with God is literally just a bonus for your happiness and in your relationship. It has nothing to do with your wealth. It has nothing to do with your success because you could have that without God. You could right. have all the money in the world without a God. You could have all the success without God. That has nothing to do with it. I'm just saying your state of heart, bro, your happiness. Yeah who you are. A lot of people say, I don't know who I am, or I don't know what I was, I don't know what I'm going to do. My common sense factor to that is talk to the creator, bro. Who, yeah. if I had a receipt, like, oh, excuse me, who made me? I need to know what I want in life. Like I would want to go to the creator. 
So how do you talk to them? Because this is what I'm saying. Like, ah. my, I envision you talking to yourself by yourself, whether you're digesting some sort of Bible verse or yeah, yeah, some yeah, Bible yeah. passage, but that's how you're speaking to him. And in my mind, I go, because I'm very like black and white rash. I'm like, then aren't you just speaking to yourself and now you're speaking intention into your life? For you to be like, yo, like I don't get, I just, I can't understand your relationship with Logan. I can't comprehend it. I don't get it. How do you start? How would you do it? Why would you do that? My thing is, yo, bro, that's between me and Logan. It's so not like, for you to come. Yeah, no, no. So, so what I'm saying is if you want to know what it's like, you meet Logan. Go introduce yourself. Sorry. So you're I, so what I'm saying is pray. You don't have to open up the Bible. You don't have to go to church right away. And that's how amazing it is. You could just be in your room and just take time. Turn your phone off. Sit there. Anything you want. I want to be a stand-up comedian. I got to know Joe Coy. I learned how to do stand up. I did Who my is research. Your mentor, by my the mentor. Way, right? So like what I'm saying is if you want something, you have to work for something. Yeah. So when you if you were so curious to the point where you're like, yo, I really want to see from George's point of view, you could. You could easily start today. You could literally take any time and it's so easy. You could take five minutes out of the day and just be like, Hey God, um, I've never talked to you in so long and I want to build a relationship with you. I love I would love to know who you are if you could just Open your heart to me. And then I don't know how he would do it, but I promise you, if you meet him, he'll meet you halfway. And I'll say this to anybody, bold face in there. Bro, I have so many stories that will blow you away. I've had just 10 or 11, 12 people that, I, that he will vouch for me that have turned to Christianity just from me saying like, bro, you don't got to buy a book. You don't got to go to church. Right. You don't got to anywhere. Just start by saying hello. If you want to have so, a relationship, say hello. So, okay, let's, so flash forward. Let's say, let's say I have a relationship. Yes. Let's have a great relationship. Say I talk to him every day, right? Oh, bet. This is, this is what I'm, this is what I'm trying to, this point that I'm trying to make. It's just, I, obviously, like I said, I'm not convincing you otherwise. Yeah. I'm sitting in a room. I'm talking to God and I say, you know what, God, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for giving me all these great things in my life. I'm so, so grateful for all the things that you've given me already. Uh, I want to be better at this as a person. Yeah. I want to be better at uh, my interpersonal relationships. I want mm -hmm. to be better at my intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about those things. And I'm sitting in my room and I'm thinking about those things. Yeah. What I'm saying is, isn't that also a form of intention? So me bringing that into my life now mm -hmm. is because I'm consciously thinking about it instead of it being in my subconscious. Because remember, remember God is good. Uh, so amazing. When you, when you call to him, you're calling to good intent. Got it. And then... When I started, stop asking him, but I still worked for things. It wasn't like I got lazy and sat on the couch. I still very much worked for things, but random things fell into my lap that I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Maybe that could be something cool. Uh, and then all of a sudden I'm performing in front of Joe Coy's audience. And when I walk off stage, I uncontrollably start crying because I was like, oh my God, I never thought I'd ever love anything mm -hmm. like this. Do you get what I'm saying? So like what I'm saying is when you're sitting down. Right. And you're like, oh, I want to do this. No, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to manifest it. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. But the difference is when you have a partner and that's what God is. When you have a partner, that partner could be like, hey, man, I'm telling you what you're doing right now ain't the way you want to do it. This is how you want to do it. And when you start having that relationship with them, you're like, okay, cool. Let so, me trust you. And then take here, here's way. the deal. Here's my, my opinion on this and my, my perspective, right? This is why I always, I come to this crossroads, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely, I'm not telling you right now I don't believe in God. I do believe in God. I believe in like a higher power. I believe in, there's, there's no way all this shit lined up the way it did so not. perfectly. It's right? not a coincidence. But, but my yeah. point is this. All these things you're saying mm -hmm. in relationship to God, you're not, like, you got to answer this question. Has God ever physically spoken to you? Bro, wildly. No, has he, has he talked to you? Like, is he having a conversation with you? Uh, like when you sit down in the morning, you say, God, he's like, yo, what's up? And you're like, yo, I was thinking through, about it. And he's through, like, what were you thinking people, about? Through people. So like, for okay. example, like I'll be talking to somebody. Um, I can't get too deep into this, but this is one of the people that uh, that turned over to, to, to the Lord. Okay. And uh, I was sitting there and something in my heart was like, yo, that person is going through something crazy. Mind you, he was not showing any of that signs. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, yo, I'm not going to do that. That's weird. And I literally fought myself on it. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And then as I was walking out about to not do it, I was like, man, but what if... About to not what? Talk to this person Got the it. way my heart was telling me to talk to this person. Got it. And I was like, nah, that's weird. And, and it's so funny because I always tell people like, 
when you feel weird is when you know you're by God. Like right now on a podcast, I could be talking about my movies coming out or anything like that. Right. But me talking about Jesus makes me feel weird, which it shouldn't because all of that is because of him. But I'm still always going to feel weird when I'm making decisions from. So I went up to this person. I did what my heart wanted me to do, which I feel like it's God because I didn't want to do it. So, yeah. So this is the thing. That's yeah. the thing that I'm talking about. There's what a if, Holy Spirit in you, bro. But when what you if have you just those felt, thoughts in your head like, oh, I should do that, but no, I shouldn't. What if that's just your intuition and that's just what you've learned, everything up to the point in your life where you learn about being a person that you are today and, and caring and loving how you are today? Well, I'm challenging. I know this. I'm not, mm. trying, to, I'm not trying to say you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, if yeah. that's just, that's your heart because of everything you've learned up to this point? In, in whether or not God is there or not, mm. I'm saying like, could that exist, right? What because, if I could tell you there's a way to find it if it's true or not? And here's the, this is why I'm asking you this. Yeah. I had a great relationship with God growing up, right? Yes, yes. And I, also because I was somewhat forced to. And then as I got a little older, I started to have a good relationship. And then I got a little older. Yeah. Well, I would say around like, I don't know, 22. And yeah. then I kind of stopped having those conversations. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm not saying from 22 to 32 where I'm at today, the last 10 years, it's just been the easiest ride of my life. Absolutely not. Yeah. But I always, always lived with purpose and with intention and like trying to do things passionately. Yeah, yeah. And I can, can directly relate to having conversations with people or speaking about things with people, especially younger men yeah, yeah. and, and wanting to almost like cry when I'm done. Cause I have these like real emotions yeah. because of my past and my childhood and what I've been through and being able to give anything to those kids that are asking me these questions, like in real life, like at my gym or at, ex at expos back in the day. Yeah. And I can say that throughout those years, I didn't have direct relationships like, conversation with God. I wasn't like, God, what, what should I be doing? But I was always listening to my heart and trying to be as clear with my conscience as possible mm -hmm. and trying to do as much good as possible. Got it. So at every point along the way I did, for example, I spent extra time and I, I'm not saying this to brag. This is not to brag. No, I spent know, extra no, time at an expo and they're shutting off the lights because I wanted to speak to the people who were there, who were supporting me because I know I wouldn't be at the point in my life at that point yeah, yeah. if it wasn't for those people supporting me. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is along the way, I never was like, I never was like checking in with God and being like, am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. I was just kind of checking in with my own consciousness yeah, and saying yeah, like, yeah. is this making me happy? Mm -hmm. Is this what, who I really am? Is this what I really want to give to people? Mm -hmm. Right? So I, the reason why I'm challenging it is because I grew up that way with God yeah. and I had those conversations with God and then I, I'm not, I fell out in those conversations with God, but I still continue to see success and to see personal happiness. Now, yeah. am I the happiest person in the world in all aspects of my life, relationships, business? No, I'm, I'm yeah. learning and I'm still growing. Yeah. But my willingness and my openness to, to learn and to grow is mm -hmm. always there because I know that's what matters in life to be successful or to be happy or to give love or to share love or to, to be there for someone. Like if I was not happy in of myself, how could I help make you happy or you happy or anyone else in the world happy, right? Yeah, exactly. So exactly. I'm constantly... Uh, I don't know, doing inventory in my life, in my, yeah. in my, in my, in my, in myself, in my heart, like you say, yeah. and you say it's from God, it, or could it, could it not just be from you and your own introspective of yourself? Can I ask you a question? Of course. Anytime. Um, if you had a son, I'd love to have a son, by the way, because I grew up oh, without I'm a glad. father. I, I, this is a perfect question. Then. If you had a son right now, um, and around 22 years old, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. he just disagreed with you. He didn't understand your point of view yeah. and he left you. Wait, and you had the power to help him in life. Even though he wants nothing to do with you, would you take care of your son? Of course. You may have left him, but that doesn't mean he's left you. I have this, I, the reason why I'm getting emotional is I literally have, I ha, it's so funny because I have this conversation because I like to challenge, I like to, I like to, to ask this question, but I have this literal passage like in my room. Is it footprints in the sand? Yeah. But dude, you, I have this little pass. It's, it's in, it's, I'll show it to you. When we're I'll tell you podcast. this. And you know what? I've never publicly said this in my life. When I was in the third grade, uh, I got held back and I lost all my friends and I was getting beat up every single day and I didn't want my mom and dad to know about it, so I'd just go in my room and then I'd just pretend like I was happy and I was crying. And in the third grade, uh, it was the first time in my life, it was the first time in my life where I was like, man, should I even be here? Should I be on this earth? Uh, and it was the first day I ever didn't say my prayer. Uh, I went to, uh, went to bed and I could still see that dream like it, it was like I had it right now. And 
all of my dreams were happening. Like all the kids were nice to me. And this girl named Lindsay, my class I had a crush on, she sat right here to me, bro. And she looked at me and she said, are we gonna hang out at lunch? And that meant a lot to me because at lunch I would go in the bathroom and sit by myself. And then this kid named Bryce came in and he gave me a soccer ball. And in my heart, I've always wanted to play soccer with them. And then everything evaporated. And then this dark figure came into my face in my dream. And he said, you have left the Holy One. And I got so scared. I just started saying God's name. And I was like, God, please be with me. Please be with me. I'm really scared. And then this bright light came into my room in my dream because I was back in my room and I, and I had to bow my head. Years later, bro. Oh, let me pause right here. Two of the things that happened in my dream, I learned years later that in the scripture, the devil can't say God's name. He refers to him as the Holy One. And there was no way in my life that I was ever going to know that. And then later on, Moses couldn't see him and he got blinded. He compared it to the sun. And I remember in my dream, he was so bright, bro. I couldn't even look at him. I had to willingly bow down. And in the last scripture says, everybody will bow down willing or non-willing. So as a little boy, I, I literally saw and felt God in my dreams. And you never read that stuff prior. I woke up and I immediately started crying. And I remember before I went to bed, I threw my Bible in the, in the closet. And I said, fuck this shit. I go, if there's a God, he's a piece of shit. I don't want anything to do with him. Before this had happened. Before I went to my dream. And I went to bed. So when I woke up, I was like, oh my God, I got to grab my Bible. And I, I grabbed my Bible and I was like crying and opening, crying and opening it. And as I was crying and opening, I said, okay, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. If you exist, then why would you leave me here by myself? And then the footprints in the sand card fell out of the Bible. And I've never seen that thing in my life. That's not, I showed it to everybody in my house, not one person in my house. And that's why when me and you were looking at each other and I saw your eyes, your eyes gave me the same eyes that I had in the third grade, bro. <laughs> and I think deep down you know that he's been right next to you the whole time. And I think you have this, I don't know if it's pride or maybe a, a bit of tension and anger from your past that you have so many questions for him, but those questions can't be answered unless you have those relationships. And it, I promise you, bro. And I don't know if that's why we've been drawn near to each other, but dude, I don't care how much you could look me in the eyes and say you don't believe in God or you don't care about God, but that man loves you, bro. And you can look around and see what's happening in your life. And there's going to be a time where you look him in the eyes, but I promise you, you may have left him, but there has not been a single minute in your life that he hasn't left your side. And every time that you have those moments where you turn back and you look and you're like, those are my darkest moments. Why are there only two footprints? Is because I don't care how strong you lift, God has been lifting you through those moments. And those footprints are his, they're not yours. And I know that's hurting you hard. Because bro, like I see your eyes right now and, I, and it is literally the moments like this. And, I, and I'm, I couldn't be more blessed to have this on camera so I could watch this back myself. Because what you're going through in your eyes right now, dude, I know what you're feeling. And that feeling is that, that tiny bit of you where you're like, all right, I feel it. Yeah, I mean, well, it's like, fuck. It's a really interesting perspective to see you too because you guys both say the same things. You guys both say that we, I sit and I put intention into things. Um, and it, it's when Brad says he does what he does when he's alone. And when you say you do what you do when you're alone, it is very similar from an outsider perspective. It's just one of you is believing in God and one of you is believing in a higher power or doing things with intention. And it's just a very interesting perspective to see because you two are doing the same thing. And I think a lot of viewers are going to watch this back and see that and see that not that um, Brad is doing the same thing you are and putting as much, you know, intention into God, but you both sit down and you put intention into the, your actions and why you do it. And you reflect on what happened in the past because you did certain things and you were um, having downfalls because you were lost with God and you're having downfalls because you don't think that you were acting you know, in a positive manner or how you should. And it's just interesting to see as someone, you know, from an outside point of view, that you both are so similar um, that you believe different things. I think the best thing we could do in any relationship, right, is be real, right? And I think the problem that we have when we talk about a God is we're so scared that we can't be real. Like a lot of people don't have the ability because they're scared or they don't want to, but like, bro, I've had those conversations where I'm like, yo, I was like, what in the fuck? are you doing bro like what are you doing why am i going through this right now 
but you have to stick with your partner to realize what he was doing. And that is where faith comes in. Faith is the biggest part. This is the biggest connection. It's like Wi-Fi, bro. If you're, if, if, if the Bible is the Wi-Fi router and you keep walking away, of course, you're not going to have faith. You have no connection. You're not staying here. So if you have between, and you can forget this podcast, you forget us. And if you just want to take this in, bro, and if you have questions and you're like, yo, if there is a man named Jesus, I am really, really pissed at him right now. Like I have so many questions. My, I am more angered with him than I am in love with him right now. And I'm telling you, use that. Talk to him about it. Because I promise you, bro, if, if he exists and he has that, he, I guarantee you he's going to defend himself and explain himself. He's not going to do an action without a cause with no reason. I guarantee you there's things in your life that it's happen. It's been a long time, though, man. That and happened does when I was he six. have to be called a Listen, that's the saying. It's this when I was six years old. My father took his life. My father hung himself. He hasn't answered me since. hasn't told me why. I mean, besides the fact that obviously everything that I have to this point and fuck <clears throat> And all the. It's okay, bro. Um, and all the. Fuck. And all, all the pain that came with it. Yeah. And <sighs> everything that I have and looking back on like all the content that I made. Um, Is it hard to believe in a God because that happened and because you went through that experience? Is it hard to, because you never got an answer? Well, th so, oh, so that's what I'm saying, right? Like I, I do have an answer now, but it's like, was it because I just found it? I, like I have an answer now because I've gotten to a point in my life that I've been able to share on so many different platforms because of social media. Like granted, when that happened to me when I was young, it wasn't like, it happened and I go, okay, I'm six years old. My father did this. Like, all right, he killed himself. What does that mean? Like, you know, you talk about these stories about crying. Like, bro, I used to walk to school every fucking morning and go into like fucking alleyway just to let it out every single morning. And like, I look back on that shit. Oh, sorry. I look back on that and I'm like, that made no sense to me then. It makes sense to me now, but it wasn't like some God was like, yo, check this out. Like it just, it, I was understanding. Okay. This is what I was trying to say when it happened to me. Then it wasn't like there was a road that it was like, yo, if you just keep following this road, um, you're, there's going to be the internet and social media and Instagram and YouTube. These are things like, cause none of that existed back then yeah, when I was course, six yeah. years old. Right. And as I went through the whole process that I've been through over the last 12 years of being on the internet, the conversations that I have with people in real life at these expos, at these events. Cause I used to talk a lot on YouTube and I talk a lot of shit and never got that many views. We get a couple hundred thousand views where I would talk about my life, what I've been through, what I think about it, like what I learned from it, how it can make, how it made me better and how it can make other people better. And I would get such good feedback and response. Like those are the videos that people really resonated. It really resonated with them. Yeah. And I was able to look at that rationally and be like, Oh, as I got older, it started to make more sense. This is why I went through that in my life and why I was able to get to this point in my life because I, I really genuinely care and still care to this day about giving back that like, this is what I went through. This is what I learned. You could do it too. You could become better. You, Cause like it's, it's really rooted in the fact that I grew up without a father and I, I wanted that my whole life. And, and I look for it. And now now I'm in a like a. Now I'm in a really cool position to to give that right what I didn't have, but. So many people. Like never get that. They never get that like ability to find out why. Like some people, they could take that six years old, then they're 16, 17, 20, they kill themselves, so they kill someone else because they're so disappointed in how they got there and where they're at in their life and why did this happen? Like I've had all those thoughts. Why this happened to me? Am I not good enough? Like what is wrong with me? Why did my dad do this? Like what does this mean? What is life? What is death? What's the point of all yeah. this? And I've gone through all that stuff, right? And the reason why I have this tussle with God is like, I know of so many other people that went completely that way. Yeah. 
right? Who also believed in God. Yeah. And that's why so, in the beginning I said that doesn't. So, so in my mind, I'm like, okay, yeah, I have it. I'm here. This is amazing. And I'm mm -hmm. so grateful to be able to be in this position, to have this opportunity to talk to young men yeah. and to, to share where I've been in my life, especially being a figure who's looked at like, oh, this is a big, tough guy. Like yeah. I'm just a human man. And, but I also know about everyone else who, cause I have conversations with these kids who come talk to me and they say, yo, I heard what you said on the podcast about this. Cause I talked about, I've talked about this stuff a lot over the years yeah. and those people come up to me and it's like, like people would cry to me. People would I share their life stories. a lot of people's lives. Well, I've had people tell me that in person. I've had people tell me that on the internet and I'm not, this is not me at all How trying to say. How many people do you think I didn't even tell Thousands. You? I'm sure. So, and I've, I've literally had as hundreds well, it, As long me. as it was one. I mean, that's why you it, did all of this. And this is the thing. This, you know? I, I'm not saying like, yo, hey, hey, go Brad. But what I'm saying, the thing that I have this issue with is like, yes, I got here. Yeah. Right. And I'm here. Yeah. And I was able to do that. And there's those hundreds of people or thousands of people or who, whoever knows how many people. Right. Yeah. But there's so many other people who like it completely moments, completely destroyed their lives. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, I just have this, it, this like this tug of war where I'm like, it's not that I don't believe in that. I just don't like. You just don't, well, you, like, why? Why? Cause my, cause I'm, I'm a very like rational person. I'm very black and white. Yeah. And I go, okay, it does make sense to me why that yeah. happened to me now. Mm -hmm. And it took 20 years to figure that out. Yeah. Right. Cause when I was about 26 and when I started figuring this out through, yeah, yeah, through yeah. like my content and then like having interaction with people being like, oh shit, that really meant something to that person. The person came fitted out in all my gear and they're crying to me. Yeah. And they're telling me about their life and the things that I said. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, thank you. Number yeah. one. But like. It made sense then, but people live their whole lives and it doesn't make sense. The things that happen to them and, it, and they still believe in God. It feels like you have this perspective that you have, um, like the, you know, if I put my intention to this, um, these things will come, you know, if I put my energy into this, because you know that at that point, when that happened with your dad, you were in your darkest point, you know, it could have ruined you if you let it, but you chose to not let it ruin you. And you put the work in to not let it ruin you and to better your life and not let it go down this path. And I think that's why you're at the position that you are, because if you were to just sit back and kind of let God deal with it, maybe you wouldn't be where you are. You had to put in a lot of work to get where you are. And maybe that's why you look at things in a way of if you put the self work in and self improvement, because that's what you had to do to get yourself out of that rut and to be where you are, because this it could have destroyed you. It could have taken you a different path. If you let it, you could have coped with drugs, you could have coped with, right. you know, hurting other people. But instead, you said, No, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to put well, positivity that's, out. That's the thing in the beginning. That's why I lived with the gym was my thing, because it it was an escape. It was for me. So like my brain is, is constant thinking, 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 I'm talking to you and I'm thinking about two other things at the same time, yeah. having this conversation so much of that. And I always noticed like, since I was a kid, I noticed that because very early on, and I've told this, I've said this story before. I remember once my mom told me, yo, your dad is not like, your dad is gone. He's not coming back. I remember being like, what the fuck does that mean? And then for so long, I'm thinking like, the f what does this mean? And, and like I told you every morning I'd walk to school and I go on the, the, what they would call like the little cut and then you, people would like smoke weed and stuff. I never smoked because I was afraid of drugs because my dad, I knew he had done drugs. And I was like, maybe that's what led him there. Um, long story short, like I would always cry and I'd think about these things and I'd be like, well, like, but why did I end up here? Right. And the, the point is like, it, it just, it didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Like when I, and then when I found the gym, I was able to escape just all those thoughts. I was able to be like, okay, when I'm in the gym and I'm lifting weight, it's so much harder to think about my, my childhood my life my past my dad the thing that makes me feel bad like all these things like i realized like yo this is just like like nothing else existed yeah so that's why like i got so in love i was I felt so in love with it because it's like how could i not want to do the thing that makes me feel like i can ca be calm yeah it was like feel a, the same about absolutely the yeah. absolutely it's, it's never, changed it's never wavered it's no it's absolutely changed a lot it's changed a lot but there are still moments like I know now I have other mechanisms of, of coping with it, which is like straight up just talking about it, mm -hmm. like therapy, right? Or meditation on my own personal time, right? Mm -hmm. um, therapy as well was another way that I did. Like I said, not with obviously on podcasting, which I made it seem with like a with a therapist, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Meditation, the gym, the gym now is like, I notice if my, if my brain gets really loud, if I can go in there and just like focus on that, like it can kind of like quell that thought. Um, but yeah, I would say for like 20 some, 20 years, 24 years, it was like really just about avoidance. Mm -hmm. Now I have a different relationship with it because I have different outlets of releasing that emotion or that energy. Would you say it's a healthier relationship? Way healthier now. But it took me 
like I said, like 26, 27 years to get to that point. Mm -hmm. But anyways, when I'm talking about this with God, it's like in my, like, and I told you straight up, I have that passage in my, in my room and I'll show you that as soon as we're done here. Can I, Cause I want to I believe that thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first I could, I might get disrespect you by saying like, yo, I get where you're coming from. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't deal with that, but I have fortunately have talked to people and understood their point of view and they discuss a family member taking their life. Um, the power of free will is, is it's power. Now the decisions your father made up until that point, and you were very young, you don't know his demons. You didn't know the situations he was placed with. Yeah. I know all of it now. That's true. The thing, yeah. But when you were going through it, what I'm saying is his actions were his actions. They weren't made for you, bro. They weren't, for sure. they weren't made to destroy you. Did it destroy you? Absolutely. But what I'm saying is you moved on. And what I'm saying is when God works with you, even though you felt like he's not, because I know you say, I, I get emotional so much, I could cry. Bro, that to me, I feel like that when God's doing work in my life, bro. I get emotional because the, the, the feeling is so overwhelming. So what I'm saying is that situation was so unbelievably bad and I couldn't even, it, you couldn't give me enough days to paint it out to you. But what I'm saying is what people deal with now, especially during our time now, bro, how many people you're stopping from doing that to themselves is at a as, is at a, such a higher level. So what I'm saying is, and, and it's so hard because I want to choose my words properly. If you could change anything right now, would you? Nothing. And I think God knows that. And I think God put that in your heart. And as much as you say he's not a part of your picture, he gave you that strength to move forward. That's bro. the thing though, right? It's like now I would say that. Yeah, because you're getting wiser, bro. The right. The older you get, the wiser you get. This you're, is the you're making decisions that you didn't know were good, but you did them. Right. Like I said, if I built a machine, a vending machine, here's the rules. I put a dollar, I get a snack in. When you do good things, bro, God's going to bless you, regardless if you worship him or not. That's what I was trying to say. That's what I was trying to say earlier. He's not, he's not waiting for you to get on his knees, bro. That's what I was trying to say earlier. He's because, blessing you left and right because be, he knows what you've dealt with. That's why in the beginning I said, don't put your finger and say, why is this person acting like this or she's doing this or that you don't know a home. I didn't know that about you, bro. But it makes a lot of sense that that built the man you are today. God, God, yes, you lost a father, bro. But you didn't lose a heavenly father. And he built you as a warrior, bro. Literally, the physique and all, your mental, your mental state is higher than anybody that I've ever talked to you out here. When me and you get in deep conversations all the time, I know that you've been through shit. I never I knew what it that. was. You're one of the most level-headed, rational people I've met. And it's really um, satisfying to have a conversation with you because you can communicate yourself in a very cordial and co like constructive way where you don't just, your mind isn't close to other people's opinions and you can articulate yourself in like a really mature way. It's really nice having these conversations with you. When, I never feel shamed in my opinions. When, when you have a, a, I'm using bodybuilding for an example because hopefully a lot of your audience is feeling the same way right now, but before you have the growth and you put in the work, you feel a lot of pain because you tear your muscles. Of course. I mean, dude, I've literally had conversations like this with my audience in the past. That's like, what I'm saying. I'm saying, bro, you dealt with like crazy pain that for we've never actually had to deal with, but the growth is greater. So what I'm saying is you could do so much on this earth. Not that you're not doing it now, but I really do feel the only reason you're not opening up the Bible is because you're very upset with God. I think you believe in God. I think you just feel like you're your own God in your own universe right now. And you feel like you could do the job better than him because he let you down as a kid. And that if you had the ability, you wouldn't let a kid go through what you went through. No, I would never. But he's seeing it from a greater point saying that he had to let you go through that. He had to let you go through that. So the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of kids that you're saving don't have to go through that. So yeah. if I had to play the role of God and see how this whole thing came out, even yourself, you said you wouldn't change a thing. No. So like I how said, could you be mad at God for letting it happen when he knew the outcome that was going to happen? That's the thing. It just feels like I figured it out. I think, and I, and, and maybe again, that sounds wrong. It sounds you know? like a lot of pride. 
It does. Sounds like a lot of pride. What I'm saying. But it is what happened, though. True. Like straight up. True, but it, it, you can't tell me that you're not blessed. No, no, I'm not arguing that. What I am absolutely so grateful. Do you for my feel life. like there's a lot of people that do what you do right now that don't have the same outcome? That make the videos, that talk to the internet, that does the body work. I know, bro. I literally was at LA Fitness and I saw a dude that looked like a copy carbon of you, and he was wearing your merch. Like he <laughs> That's he, sick. I, I swear to God, he looked like That's you, and sick. I was like, bet. So I thought he was like your boy. So I went up to him and said, like, oh no, I just like his merch. That's <laughs> sick. But what I'm saying is like, there's so many people out there that are just like you, but the rewards are different, bro. And me, maybe it's because deep down, God knows your heart and knows what you're going to do with your platform. And there's a lot of people that have platforms that don't use it right, but that's because they chose to not use it right. Yeah. All I say is this. After everything I said, again, this is a relationship. So I would take that into consideration and, and get into your room one day, put your phone away and just chop it up with them. Be like, yo, like, like what? Why did I have to go through this? Why couldn't you help me prep this? Why didn't you show yourself? There's so many questions I have for you. Like, why did you have to go through? What, couldn't you get to where you're at now without losing your father? There's so many questions. Oh, I don't think so. But, but no. you, you already know the answers. What I I'm know saying the answer. Is no. they're put, that, put, that was put in your heart for a reason. And there's so many people out here that are watching this video that are like, dog, I had no idea it was that deep. And I didn't know that that related to me. And it, it, it all stems from being insecure and having that conversation with that person or that God. A, a relationship and a marriage and a friendship and a partnership and in a holy version, it always has to stem for communication. And you have not communicated to him that you're very angry with him, that you're very upset with him, that you could, you could say anything, but you could say, be like, yo, give me the throne. I would do it better than you. But you can say whatever you want because I promise you he'll at least talk to you back. And there'll be a conversation. He could say words to you that I can't even comprehend, that I can't say, that I can't open up your heart. And just imagine, say, bro, say hypothetically I am right, that this crazy Middle Eastern kid, there is a God, <laughs> and that you talk to him, and it opens up your heart, and not those thousands that you just saved become millions. All because of your ego of just putting down your, your, your sword and your shield and being like, all right, no more arguing. If your existence is real, I want to know where you were when I was a child and be real. And anybody who's at home that is dealing with suffering at home or, or, or in the future or in the past, if you ever caught yourself in a place, in a moment where you're mad at God, it's totally fine. But in any relationship, when you bottle it up and you explode later, it's never healthy. Not for a marriage, not for uh, 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 anything. If you bottle up your expression and how you feel and try to work on it, nothing will be stemmed from that. And you know that better than anybody. Cause I was going to say, did you hear that one, Brad? <laughs> yeah, no, I know that. The thing is, I know that. I just know that even without God. Yeah, that's the truth. And I feel, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the same path you are just because, like, I also don't believe in God. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not shaming you or anything like that. But I, I'm just saying from the outside point of view, watching you two speak, it feels like you're both saying the same thing. Because I'm you telling you, bro, put, you're on the same wavelength as me. It's just you haven't accepted it yet. And, and that's fine to say. <laughs> I'm being so and real, And that's doc. fine to say. And I don't, I'm not disrespecting your beliefs, but I, I don't want to kill the idea that there is no God. And you could, we could just be doing these things out of pure self-work and intention and to put good out into the world because we want to. And I, that's what I do. That's how I conduct my life. And I feel as if I am doing the same thing as people that are following like the Bible. And I think that the Bible says to put good out into the world. Don't condemn others. Don't put negativity out. Don't harm others. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing. So who really gives a shit if it's in the name of God or in the name of whatever else I want to call it, the higher power yeah. or the universe, whatever. I am still doing the same thing that you are doing and I am working hard and I'm helping others. And I think that as long as you are doing those things, it doesn't matter if you're doing it for God or if you're doing it for this or that, as I, long as you are just doing you it. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of CrossFit. Okay, let me explain. Ew. Okay, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, no. listen, listen. No, 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 swear to God. God is like working out. Hold on, hold on. Let me, you know, everything in my life is like working like out. Okay, let me explain workout. this. No, 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 that's what I'm saying though. So listen, you said that's the worst workout, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not disagreeing, <laughs> but here's the deal. It's still got a lot of people in shape who wouldn't have done it otherwise. True. So my point is this. 
it's the same concept to so my gym bros. I love you guys always. I got you because I, I not fold the CrossFitters. Them. No, 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 no. CrossFit, no. CrossFit is great. Those. They no, 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 no. A little CrossFit, lesser. But hold on, hold on. You're there. CrossFit at the highest level is insanely impressive. I think CrossFit at the box level, where you're like your local run of the mill CrossFit, it's just like it's just people who are not really teaching. They're just getting a bunch of people in a room. Like at the highest level, CrossFit and the CrossFit Games, those guys are fucking crazy athletes. Just I'm just saying. Way yes. to go. I'm just saying. If you're like, yo, I go to my local CrossFit and they're having you clean and jerk and squat and snatch, <laughs> they're probably not teaching you how to do that shit properly. I've seen it a million times. People get so hurt in that shit. Yeah. Statistically, I'm speaking facts, right? Got it. CrossFit in general is what I'm saying, though. It's like, okay, bodybuilding is there, Olympic lifting is there, um, powerlifting is there, and then CrossFit was like the, man, that shit's stupid, which. I was one of those people at one point, but if it gets those people who wouldn't have otherwise been in shape, yes. in shape and healthy and feel good about themselves, then that's what really matters. Yes. Not necessarily, like I'm saying, this is, we're all coming to this like conclusion of, you know, in your eyes and in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart, it's God and God and his ability to yeah. work with you as an individual, right? In mine, it's like, yeah, I was there and I was like, fuck you, motherfucker. I'm going to fucking put myself through pressure. Yeah. Until like so that I can avoid this shit. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it started to make sense. And yes, there is still a part of me that like I really do want to believe. I want to totally believe. But at the same time, there I are people it. out there. I see it. You're cap. I see it. There's <laughs> there's <laughs> this is you. <laughs> there's people out there who are one hundred percent on the other side of like, I don't believe in that shit at all. That's we me. I'm going to just be honest. That, that is me. I went to church when I was little, you know, and like I, I have not read the Bible. That's why I say I'm ignorant. I have not read the Bible, so I don't want to speak on what the Bible says. Um, but I don't believe in God. I, I don't. I believe in the universe. I believe in energies. I do not believe in God. And yeah. that's okay because I still do the same. I still believe the same things you do, and I still conduct my life. I'm not. I won't say in the same way because out of I don't want to disrespect you, but I conduct my way or my life in a positive way. I try to give back and I try to have the same moral compass as yeah, you. Yeah, like I said, so, in the beginning, there like there's there's a lot of bad Christians. There's a lot of good Christians. I, I, like the how you are as a human being isn't going to stem about what you worship. I think you you're born with a with a heart of it's either pure or it's not. No, but it's how you conduct your life. Yeah. And you said you conduct your life in a certain way because oh, yeah, yeah, of the yeah, Bible. Absolutely. We, absolutely, and yeah. and no, there, no. you can, and I, I can conduct my too. life in the same way you do, and I don't have to believe in the Bible to do that. And we can both get the same outcome, just like the two of you have said. So it just feels like we all can do the same thing and get in the same place. And it doesn't have to be called God. It can be something else if you're uncomfortable calling it God. Because like you said, some people can be uncomfortable having that conversation. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. So let's change topics a little bit. The whole podcast was about... Uh, can I pee? Uh, yeah, go yeah, for it. You guys it, go have on. a fun little Yeah, pee go pee for it. Moment. And keep that door open too, by the way. Okay. When you open it. Wow. But not the bathroom door, just that door. No, no, no. I just... Okay. The air goes on. It goes like... Shh, uh, I just want to... Hey, HR. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 keep it open. Yeah, you're great. Thank you. Um, so I want to ask you about this uh, getting kicked off the plane. Uh, oh, shit. Because you didn't get to tell the story. <laughs> Dude. Oh, Can you tell so the story? Fun. Damn, you have all that? We haven't talked about any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just went. We just riffed it, bro. We uh, just went with it. Uh, so We don't even need to talk about all that. It is not. I just That's just like some points, you know? So I, uh, which, which she put together, by the way. Shout out. Dude, shout out now. She's there. You're the best. Yeah. Thanks, baby. She crushes it, bro. Jess, right? No. Oh, she's just. She's just. That's Natalie. Natalie. <laughs> Edit that out. That's good. <laughs> yeah. She's sitting there editing it out herself. She's like, no, no. Fuck this guy. No. So, so <laughs> what was God, the story? Huh? What was the story? Uh, so, I I started getting really bad anxiety on, on the plane. I f I know that feeling, dude. I hate it. It gives me such bad anxiety, and uh, I lost a really good friend of mine. Now, now hold on though. Yeah. You were on. Okay, no, just continue. Sorry. Yeah, so I, don't I was on up. my way to uh, Cleveland. Okay. And uh, I was like, yo, I'm going to double down on my, on my edibles. So, because one, I, I just, I kept crying because I lost my friend. Yeah. And I was like, uh, oh, if I, if I get high, I'll laugh. I'll forget about it. And then I was like, oh, turbulence. And I was like, all right, double down. You know what I mean? Like double the laughs. But this is my thing with, with edibles. I'm like, yo. Oh, I don't take edibles. So this is why nobody, I didn't know. Got it. I smoke weed. Got it. And my you friends take edibles. Up. Oh, I fucked up okay. big time. Because because edibles give me anxiety. Like to the oh. craziest oh, degree. Oh, bro. Just wait. Okay. So I'm sitting there. I'm watching Born Identity. And uh, I'm watching. I'm watching it. First edible kicks in. I was like, Bop, yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Turbulence starts hitting. And I'm like, nah, nah. So it didn't equal out, bro. I started getting paranoid. I was like, oh, no. 
So oh, I started thinking fuck. about it. I started thinking of every possible way this plane could go down. I was like, yeah. fuck Well, only that. really one way, just right? down. You nope. Know? Nope. We don't know. We can do a loop de loop. I don't know. <laughs> On the, before I even take the edibles, bro, uh, this dude, we're right before we get to the TSA because I was like, all right, I'm just going to take this and then walk to the TSA. Yeah. Uh, so I take the edibles there. And there's this two uh, couple, not two couple, there's a couple uh, with like 19 kids, bro. Like they had so many kids. So I was like, damn, bro, like, I'm Christian, but you could have got rid of one of them. You know? oh <laughs> I was kidding. Uh, there were so many kids. I was like, damn, bro, what the fuck? And then I turned to the dude next to me, and I was like, man, this is giving me anxiety. And he starts laughing like an older man. Like, oh, 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 yo, boy, you have no idea. And then he was so nice, he like started helping them out. And I turned to me, and I go, I don't know, man, because they held up the line so much. I go, bro, I hate when people hold shit up or cause a scene. Like, I fucking hate that shit. Like, get your shit in order, bro. Yeah. Like, get your kids I, in honestly, outfits. Yeah, I one, two, that. three, and just like number them yeah. down. I feel it. So, uh, mind you, I was Middle Eastern growing up, bro. If I tried to do any of the things that these kids were doing, oh, body ask, bag. Are you, Persian? Are you Persian? I'm not Persian. Do you what, smell like what's your? I don't know what you're... <laughs> Is no, that why you thought you I was Persian? Have, we didn't bring this up yet, but you are like giving me PTSD right now. Well, yeah, I know no, my yeah, ex no. is watching this. You look just like him. Like, That's spitting funny. imagely Damn, weird. Yeah. But, sorry, I also have to say, are you poor? Because why doesn't the water work? In the bathroom, the or did you work? set me up? Yeah, she the said, toilet, "Are you Persian and are you poor?" The toilet, yeah. the toilet. No, Persians are not poor. Okay? No, wait, no, no, wait, no. wait, Middle wait. Eastern what people are very there? successful. What happened? In um, there? bad things because I didn't get to flush. Um, no, he's talking about your relationship. Oh, for worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, a lot of shit no, there no. too. <laughs> the toilet does not. Flush. Okay. Did you take and a shit sink? right now? Did you take no, a shit? I did not poop. You can go look if you'd like. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I peed. You just I hear from far away. No, but uh, when I wait, I feel like I'm being set up right now because it doesn't flush. And that's embarrassing. Something's and then I went to wash my like, hands. No water. So oh, are you poor? Fuck? No, no, I the flushed. The water must just be turned off. I flushed. Off. I flushed. That's weird. Your cat. See? Does someone want to go try for me? No, uh, no. Here, you guys. Okay. Continue the story. I'm going to figure this out right now. It's what do you mean? I'm telling you. Can you, you recap the, the story a little bit? While I guarantee you the toilet's fine. Where are you going? Oh my Jesus God, story. I think Brad has a piss fetish. He just wants to look at my pee, that's all. He just wanted to see how hydrated you are. Yes, definitely. So what are you? What's your um, ethnicity background? I'm a Syrian. Oh, you're Syrian, that's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I peed, right? Did she poop? Okay, update. Um, Jess is 100% telling the truth and there is no running water there. None. Did you pay your bills? I thought you sold drugs. Aren't you rich? You're literally poor. Dude, what the fuck is going on right we now? We just talked about Didn't how you, you got all the success. The <laughs> Did you break my fucking toilet? I guess toilet? I have I'm running sending, I'm water. Sending, I'm sending you the invoice, you fuck. What do you think, I broke it? Oh, you were the last one there when it used, when it was usable. I don't know. All I know is that the person who didn't believe in God didn't get anything that she wanted. What? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. No, it's okay. Dab okay. me up. Hurry yeah, up. I got camera. Okay, okay, listen. Okay, listen. Uh, Tell us the story. You know what? Story. I think God would have flushed that pee for me. Thank you so much. He, would have he wanted us all to laugh about it. Was it was some spicy pee. Yeah, that's it's not very spicy nice Spicy pee? It smelled spicy? Would you yeah. Why? Spicy. He wouldn't smell No, it just gave me like a waft. Okay. Anyways, anyways, you don't. <laughs> okay. So what happened? Dude? Oh, so uh, so I get on the plane. I take the edibles, and he's a pilot, but he wasn't uh, flying this plane. So he sits up front. The guy the that gentleman. I was like, oh, don't like cause. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sitting in a seat, and the first edible hits in, then the turbulence hits in, and I'm like, oh, yo, this is bad. Second edible kicks in, and I'm like, bro, it was like a movie. Like literally, it was like everything was like moving, and I was like. Oh, I'm gonna die. Yeah. Like I'm for sure gonna die right now. Yep. So I told Mike, I was like, well, I, gotta, I gotta go, get move, move. He's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like I gotta, I gotta go throw up. So I, in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna make myself throw up. Yeah. To get this shit out of me. Yeah. I'm I've walking, walking, bro. And I just remember the last thing I remember as I asked the flight attendant, I go, excuse me, where's the bathroom? And she pointed. And it was right next to the cockpit. Bro, I wake up. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You go from where's the bathroom to I, I wake literally, up. Literally, where's the, the bathroom? What the fuck is going on? I wake up and and they're like, oh, I, I'm hearing like, wake him up, wake him up. And then I forgot the fact that I was going to the bathroom. You fall asleep you in forget? front of the cockpit? I, I passed out and smacked my head on the door where the, the pilots are, the metal door. I smacked it so hard. The pilots just, thought somebody was trying to break into the Because of the end. edibles? <laughs> yeah, because I was paranoid. I was so, so were you hyperventilating? Could have oh, been because I was attack? crying a lot. I was dehydrated. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, 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 I was dehydrated. Okay. So, pass out, smack my head on the thing, but I smacked my head so hard, bro, that Wait, the pilots oh, hold completely on. freak out. So you were crying because you were scared. I was crying because my friend passed away. 
Okay. I, Can you okay. pay attention? I'm sorry. I didn't know she that. She's taking I, a shit and she knows what's happening. Yeah, you I knew about the fucking the, peed. I thought we confirmed okay. that. Brad sorry. smelled it and everything. Okay. I, uh, my apologies. Continue. No worries. No worries. So I, I smacked my head. I thought I'm in my seat sleeping and they're just trying to wake me up for a snack. And I actually got pissed in the moment. I was like, dude, why the fuck are they waking me up? Because like, I know that you're not supposed to wake somebody up. So I was like, I was like, so I said, yo, I'm sleeping. That's what I said. And the flight attendant goes, hey, man, you can't do that here. And then Mike's standing. So I'm waking up. They already removed my shirt, bro, because they were working on me. They thought I was fucking dead. They, like, they thought I, like, died. Holy shit. So they're, like, working on me. They're, like, pulling my legs. They're, like, making sure they're lifting my shit. And I think they had a nurse there and everything. Yeah. So then the flight attendant heard me say, I'm sleeping. And he goes, why the fuck are you sleeping here? Because he was, like, the last flight attendant to show up. And Mike goes, hey, man. He fucking passed out. He's not sleeping. <laughs> so then that's when I realized I passed out and all my memory came back that I was trying to go to the bathroom. Were well, you still high as fuck at this no, point? No, completely sober. Wow. But like I was in and out. I was in and out. Like I kept passing out and then coming back. So I was like, oh, it damn. was kind of like a game. Like I would be like, oh, like, no, I'm good. And then I would go back out and then I would come back in the middle of the airplane somewhere else. I was like, oh, this is fucking terrible, right? Holy Has this shit. ever, have you ever passed out outside of this incident? No. Oh, yes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but often, not like this. Not often. like this. this uh, when not, have you gotten like a, like a scan? Of your brain? Uh, no, no. I, I, first of all, stick to titties, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, 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 you're no, no, you're gonna piss her no, off. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, well, ask Brad. You don't want to piss no, me off. No, you're gonna piss her off. I'm just kidding. I was joking. I made one titty joke. No, 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 no. Okay, you've been telling me that I pooped. I've never pooped once in my life. That's what she draws a lot. She goes, "That shit." I've never fucking done that before. All right, now you're saying I'm only good for titties. It's the poop thing. Thank you so much. I know it is the poop thing. I'm not. I've never pooped, and I don't know why you're putting that rumor on about me, guys. I've never used my my butthole before. It's for aesthetic purposes only. Yeah. And Brad's. No, no, Jesus Christ, dude. Sorry. No, I have one. Oh, is that mine? Yeah. Why didn't you bring your girlfriend? By the way, I was. I really wanted to meet her. We broke up. Like uh, about two weeks ago, we just made it public yesterday. Oh shit! Yeah. Wow. Wait, yeah, she are you cheated making... on me. It was fucked. Whoa. Yeah. Wait, the girl that I know, the one that I always see you yeah. with. Yeah. Oh damn, she you cheated on. Know. She cheated on you. With Steve what will do it. Ass. You're lying, bro. How... No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. What's going on? No, 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 no. He you're came lying. Up and he like kept buying her cars no, no, and shit. You're lying. He bought six nine to rapper to perform for her. I was like, how am I gonna compete with that? No. Oh my God. Okay. You had me going. You really had me going ass. too. You should be a comedian. You're going to do great. Oh my Yo, God, dude. You. I felt fucking horrible. No, no, no. I was like, You're I like, just like, wanted to pull a bitch off. Off. <laughs> No, when you see Steve will do it, I knew it was fake though. Because I know Steve really well. I would know that already, dog. I was like, fake. But, but when you said she cheated on you, I believed that for a second. Why? Because I don't, you just said it so sincerely. Oh, I, I mean, Not that like, you know, you're a cheatable, <laughs> a cheatable on type of guy. You just... You look like you're easy to, to cheat on. Uh, you know, you would have roasted me if you didn't stutter. Oh, no. Oh, ask gotcha. I, I'm, I'm easy to get cheated to cheat on, too. You look like you're... Uh, do you need sugar? Because you look like you're about to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fucking... Let's go, baby. Oh, I love go it. Go HR, baby. <laughs> Yo, oh, the sorry. roast is crazy. So, she, so, obviously, you guys are still together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is she a big believer too? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, dude, that's such a dope relationship. Gather, you guys have a really healthy relationship, such which a is great relationship. so uncommon in LA. And I'm wondering, like, prior to her, you said that you had like had to work on not watching porn. You had to work yeah, on, yeah, yeah. you know, like being, um, you know, loyal in a relationship and being a good boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. How was that before your relationship with your current girlfriend? Were you? Would you consider yourself somebody who entertained <coughs> multiple women? Were you? Someone I was who never a. I was never a relationship guy. Mm-hmm. I kind of just dated. Had you cheated before though? No. Like, were you? So the one thing that like I can't do, like I I really can't, I don't fuck with it. And if you do this to me, I just I won't judge you or like dislike you, but I would see you differently in my life. Uh, lying, mm-hmm. lying to me is a big thing. Uh, I can't any. I mean, like if you're telling a story and over exaggerating it for comedic purposes, I get that. But if you're genuinely looking at somebody and telling them that you love them and cheat on them, that like. That's some different level type shit I can't be a part of. Have you done that? I'm actually no. looking at you like that. Oh, no. Know. No, what did you... Brad came to me with some fun information today. So that's all. Brad... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I got, che- I got cheated no, on. I, did. I, I did. got And Brad brought me the... I was just like, wait, you, you got it on so found out today. You got cheated right on? before this podcast, like 30 minutes before. No, no, you're I'm doing know. great though, well, right? I'm doing good, right? Two times? 
Um, well, no, it was it was this, it was the same girl. Is it the no, Persian she... guy that cheated on you? No, no, no. He was racist though. Persian? <laughs> yeah. Racist? Shocked. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. You know what's I crazy it. though? Like it's crazy <laughs> though. Like he really he really like didn't. I don't know if he didn't want to be, but he acted like he wasn't until I started dating a black guy after him. And that's when it came out. But while we were together, like, he <laughs> that's was, when it came you know, out. that's when it came. But he was like, like, he was gay his whole life. You know what? I got something I got to <laughs> confess. <laughs> no, like, I'm serious, though. I'm serious. Like, I wait, I'm wait, ask, uh, do I, you um, think maybe your ex-boyfriend just didn't like you dating another guy? Um, no, I, I get that. I yeah, get yeah. that. There's a difference between fuck you dating that new guy and my people ruled over his people for years. And I have this on recording. That's pretty racist. That's <laughs> pretty racist. So it's like, I have the recording. Oh I'll my drop God. it if you want it on my TikTok. You but it's recorded like, it? I, the whole entire conversation. And he's, you know, every slur you could think of. So it's I, like. I, I heard some of it. It's, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> you should have turned to him and be it's like, bad. well, he's ruling my pussy now. So that's I all that did. matters. I did. I did. I said that. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I did. I said he's rolling over something. <laughs> oh my crying. god, dude! It's so bad. It was really bad. It, it was, was really bad. bad. I mean, it's... well, glad you're not with a racist fuck. Okay, you smoke a lot of weed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just, but I just started because I, I have really, really bad um, uh, insomnia. I could go like literally three days straight without sleeping. So you recently started smoking pot, like out of nowhere. A year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. And you had never done it before. Never, no, never. And I don't drink at all. Bro- would you? Would you have smoked right now? Yeah, yeah. Oh fuck, man. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. brought some. Should I get a joint? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. No. Um. Do you do you ever notice any like fog? Because I notice if I smoke too often, I get like brain fog. And I'm like fuck. Oh I'm yeah, yeah, like- yeah. You could go dumb, stupid with it. It's like, bro. I always tell, I encourage people, like, yo, it's it's still medicine, right? So if I give you a hammer, you could build a beautiful house. And or you could smack it against your head and kill yourself. Yeah. So you got to use it for what it is. If you're smoking every single day, bro, you're gonna be stupid as fuck. I mean, yeah, you're never, a- never once was I on marijuana. Be like, oh, dude, this is how I should live life forever. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. I do this when I have conversation with people. Yeah, yeah. No, it's totally. It's because it, it's very stimulating to your mind. Like your nervous system, it's very stimulating. Yeah, of marijuana, it so re- it like relaxes you, especially our industry, bro. We need to chill. Yeah, and it's funny. I use it, yeah, to relax, but I also use it like to work out. I like pre, it's like a pre, little pre work like not you know I cannot eat I do not eat edibles edibles will ruin my life I've had mm-hmm. terrible stories terrible experience with them but I will like a little bit of caffeine and like a little bit of marijuana not like crazy where you smoke you know a bunch of like oh I smoke like a whole blunt or a whole joint I can't do it I can take like two hits yeah. go into the gym and mm-hmm. be like so fucking focused yeah, yeah now I know a lot of people that do that a lot of people and, and, and this I is, can't do that bro. It, it's crazy now here's the thing I can't do it if like if I try to smoke at home or if I try to smoke like let's say I smoked at the gym and I was like waiting for like an hour and then I tried to work out won't happen I'll be like nah I'll do it tomorrow <laughs> so I have to like yeah, smoke <laughs> seriously I got to smoke and be like smoke and before almost like I'm getting high I'm go right into the workout Drink a ton of water and I get the craziest pumps. Straight up. Dude, if I smoke anything, I'm like, bet, I'm sleeping right now. <laughs> because think about it, I, I only started it to like... Right, right, right. It's a tool. Yeah, it's 100% it's a, tool. a tool. It's, it's a tool. how you use it. Yeah. That's the most important I, I have part. a rule. I don't, I don't ever uh, work on marijuana. Uh, also, here's another thing you should know about me. The reason I don't drink or, or promote gambling companies... Have you gambling. ever drank? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. just asked. Okay. Uh, I don't do um, a lot of the things because I've watched my family just fall apart from that shit, bro. Mm-hmm. So, like, I got super blessed that my mom, uh, dad, and sister, and me, we've been, like, we were fucking, we made it out. We made it. Like, we, we did right. good in life. We didn't get, we didn't have any chains to anything. But, unfortunately, the people in our bloodline very much lost everything from it. And we had to help them out. So, when I was watching this happen and rebuild and talking to my cousin and telling them, like, you know, everything's going to be good... I can't promote stuff like that, nor do I do it because I'm like, one, I'm an addict. It's in my blood. So that's why I don't gamble is because, dude, when I do something, I have to do it all the way. And Steve will do it. George will lose it. That'll be my nickname. (laughs) George will lose it. George will lose it. (laughs) And I'll just lose everything. Uh, And so, like, I, I I just monitor myself. And you know what? I think people should do that more often. For sure. Like, even though the, um, we cut out a, a really good conversation. I wish one day we could actually come here and like have a good conversation yeah, yeah, about yeah. it. Someday. But, but everything's good in moderation. Mm-hmm. Like you have your own version of it. I have my own version of it. You can't just like I can't take your fucking workout routine and go to the gym. Do you get what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah. everybody needs to do their thing at their pace. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing in life, right? Like we all learn at our own pace. We all like digest information and where we've gone and where we want to go based on the things we've gone through, right? Yeah, yeah. And 
let's say, for example, I was talking about my, my father earlier. It took me 20 years to be like, oh shit, this makes sense now. It's starting to make sense. It's starting to, and now it's crystal clear, right? Yeah. But for someone that could have took 40 years. My, my point is like, we only know what we know with like how we know it based on our own ability to process it and all the things we went through, right? So it's all about how you, all these things like marijuana, all these things, it's all about how you use it and your, your intentions that you put into it. Like, for example, I notice this firsthand if I smoke like two months, like three times a day and I'll smoke, then on the next day I'll do it and I'll be like, three days ago, by, I'll be like, I didn't get shit done. Yeah. I'm a no, fucking piece fuck of you shit. You, you have smoke to, during the day? Well, so that's the thing, right? I, I try not to unless it's very strategic. Do you like, smoke? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so yeah only I only smoke um, like after I get off work though. I would yep, never same. smoke before work Bro, or anything. Isn't that like the best? Hey, but I had to cut it out because I mean I tried to cut it out. I still haven't cut it out. <laughs> but like that's I look for like I start my day and I have I know what I have to work to today and I'm like just oh wait power at the end of the get... day can you feel it in your stomach when you want to smoke because I can feel it in my stomach Bro, like I'm like it's so bad. It's you know how they so say bad. it's not addictive. It is. It, Fuck it you. Is. Yeah, You're it a liar. Is. No, I've I've been smoking since I was for like probably eight years now. I've been smoking for a really long time and. I, you know, used to smoke all day, every day, wake up, take eight that, bong man. rips. I still, like, I don't, even, I, I don't even get, I still, like, I don't get no. high anymore. Like, I can smoke six blunts no, to the face, I and can't. I, it's just, like, a very maintenance at this See, those point. those are special just people. Those are special people. And so people. it's, like, I <laughs> am, the best I am someone I who can, like, you. be a productive high person. Though, I like, I could, I, I never would, but I could smoke a blunt and go to work and do a whole day's of work and be perfectly would. fine, and no one, like, nobody knows when I'm high no one can tell like really? I smoked two joints before this like bro, you know and she didn't invite so, me by the way you're bro glad, you weren't here I'm glad oh, okay, you didn't okay. give me the joint because if I smoke I'm so quiet bro ah uh, it's okay I'm yeah, just no I don't talk yeah after though after you can smoke, I'll smoke with you after and this. then you can be quiet yeah. on the way home <laughs> yeah but he's driving you right yeah he's driving you oh perfect okay cool um, your your cameraman's got styled, by the way. I, I like you Craigslist. got a good vibe on you. He's I found got him he's on got Craigslist. Some, I got my you cat swear on to Craigslist. God. The you best s- things come you from s- Craigslist. You got your cat on Craigslist. Mm-hmm. Cat. It was supposed oh. to be a bangle, but it's just a tabby. It's a I mean, cat. it's Craigslist. I paid five hundred dollars for it. So like, you thought it was a bangle? A bangle, yeah. Like a bangle. Tiger? Those are like twenty grand, aren't they? Like oh, they're really around five grand. Yeah, but I yeah. I said I need a camera guy, and I invited him to my house at eleven thirty at night. So you want to die? I didn't think it was through. Was your girlfriend home? Yes, everybody oh was home. God. I put everybody in jeopardy, bro. Dude, like, I, I'm not even kidding. I've been trying so hard in my life to, like, remove any enemy in my way. Yeah. Like, it's an obstacle. And it started to become such a challenge, and I love challenges. Like, I used to do puzzles and all that shit. So now, like, somebody will piss me the fuck off. I'm like, all right, now I gotta figure out how to make it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so fun because, like, you could take that energy and be like, fuck this dude, I'm gonna beat his ass. But, dude, hey, I'm telling you, it's so much easier in life to have no enemies. Yeah. You could go anywhere. Do you know how many times I've had, my, my friends have issues with everybody. And they're like, oh, we can't go there. Can't go there because like, they, yeah. There. And that feeling sucks when you're the one in the group who can't go somewhere because someone you don't like's there and now all your friends can't go. Like, like it's you don't want to be terrible. that guy. No, you fuck don't want to no. be that guy. It's baggage, dude. Agreed. And I and I have a huge rule, bro. If you have an issue with somebody, that does not mean I have an issue with somebody. Like I'm cool with everybody, bro. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, don't fuck you. Nope, I have no issue with him. Uh, that guy, Tommy Figure, what's his name? The guy who Tommy wants to fight Jake, Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury. Bro, I went up to him at the airport and I was like, "Oh, what's up, man?" And like I shook his hand and dude, the way he shook my hand. Oh, he was like, was, like he oh. thought I was gonna like fucking hit him or some shit. Like he was very quiet, like didn't understand. The un- He's like, that's Logan's best friend. Why is he saying Most people are very clicky. They're, they can't be cordial. So it's, it was he very was nice. new He to was him. nice or he was mean to you? He was confused. And then oh. I had to explain to him, like, bro, like, I ain't beefing with you. Like, I, I like, I'm, we're good. Like, I, I'm right, fine. Right, like, right. Good luck with your career. Like, I hope you do your best. And then he was like, oh, cool. And then we just started chatting it up. Yeah. But it's so funny, dude. Like, Hollywood is like this click shit. It's like mm-hmm. high school. They're oh, like, t- hey, dude. Totally like high school. You're like part of them, dude. Like, so like, get back there. And like you can't like intermingle. Serious, it's like prison. Like you literally, you cannot mix with groups here, or you're like, you know, weird. I mean, we intermingle. So. Well, he's fucking he has a cheat code. Who's gonna beef with you? That's what I'm saying. It's like who's this gonna is... beef with you, bro? It's I saw Vitaly beef, beef, beef with you for thirty seconds until he changed his mind you. really quickly. <laughs> bro, did you see that shit? You made him sober for forty seconds. Yeah, because he was not sober before. Who? He did that. Who? And he... Vitaly. <laughs> who's Vitaly? He, he's a Russian hitman. He's a, he was a YouTuber. He's still a, is he still a YouTuber? Wasn't there some controversy around Vitaly? Why do I know that name? Yeah, some some I don't want to put it out there like yeah, that. Yeah, okay, never sorry. Just say he's some sorry, crackhead. I just don't no, know. No, no, no. Some some oh. shit happened in <laughs> Miami. He he'd like gotten some sort of altercation okay. with someone. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't want to put he's, it. I don't he's remember, like an OG. He's, I've heard the name before. Yeah. He, we, we were he, started, Adam, he was like one of the guys that started on YouTube. Yeah. He's friends 100%. with Fuzzy? Yeah, he, yeah, they used I mean, to be best they friends. Used to be friends. Yeah. They used to be friends. Very, yeah, okay. tumultuous relationship. All the YouTubers now used to watch them. Yeah. Fusi, they were like Vitaly. the OGs. Yep. They started Crazy. it. They were like ground. And we zero. were at I was at a KSI That's versus crazy. Logan Paul, and then he got crazy, and I punched him, and then he you was like, punch bro. somebody? Oh yeah, bro. Are they okay? Yo, the yeah. where they were, that was no, wild. like their face. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a. I was more like a. What the fuck are you doing, punch? I think you would murder me if you punched me just once. I would never punch you. No, no. <laughs> I, Brad Hold would never punch second. me. But I'm no, just saying, like, great. the fear, no, the she's, force she's, behind she's, a punch in the face from you, like, I would probably die, Here's right? the deal. It was like, it was like a, why the fuck are you touching me punch? Because oh. he was my friend. Like a, and he is my friend. Like, he was someone that, like, I'd be Are you like, guys good now? Well, we were never, yeah, I mean, afterwards, yeah, we were great. We were never really bad. It was just like. Wait, is he going to keep beefing bro, with him? Like, <laughs> look, bro, when he did that, I, you, you see me in the picture. I'm like, why? Like, that was my face. I go, why would you do that? Well, that's how I was feeling. Because, like, he was obviously, I mean, he, he, he's into shit. He was probably high. I don't know what the fuck he was on. And I was jokingly, like, he was on the phone. This is how the story went down. He was on the phone, like, Snapchatting, being like, KSI, you're, because he was trying to, like, get whatever engagement case are you a pussy fight me and i was jokingly behind him like you could see the video on my vlog it's like i don't know 12 million views or some shit now um life of bradley martin anyways it's a subtle plug but just go watch the video <laughs> i don't know what time it is it's like a two hour long video it's like a movie but um he's doing that and i go in this all on video i'm like i'm jokingly like smile on my face like why don't you fight me like this like haha yeah and then he turned around because it was like he was still filming his story. And I think he was like, what the fuck? Like almost like I ruined his story thing on the Snapchat. And he turned around. He's like, what the fuck? You're like this much pounds or whatever he was talking about. Like you were this much. And then he came up to me and I'm still smiling. I'm still like, yeah. All right. But the second he touched my neck, I was like, yo, you, I can't, you can't let, I can't let you do that. <laughs> so Wait, like he touched your neck. When you say oh, touch like your neck, push, what does that mean? He pushed me neck. in the neck, like he, a neck push. Like imagine he went like this, like with both his hands and went like this. Pushed me. So immediately, he just signed his death wish. He's immediately, like, okay. I was like, it was like, what the fuck did you do? And I saw yeah. I hit him like, you twice. know what he said in his head? He goes, I got a reputation of pole. No, it was, it was like, it was just, it was just like automatic. It was like a visceral reaction. Like, like no, it was just automatic. It was just automatic. Like, why would you do that? Cause, well, cause, yeah, why would he do that? What a dumbass. I mean, like, that's the dumb. Would he reach up at you? Because it like, wasn't like I was trying to kill. Because if I was trying to kill the guy, I would have hit him and jumped on top of him. But I like I hit him like I think it was two and then like one more on the you side. You got him more than once? Well, it was like one, two, and then like maybe one as I pushed him off. But it, I didn't like jump on him and try to kill him. Because like I, I, the guy was nice. He's a friend to me. You know what I'm saying? So it was my, I was shocked. It was more like, what the fuck? And I hit him. Cause it was it was in shock. It was more like, why the fuck would you? It do was that? a reaction. Just yeah, to like that sounds like something you would say to the cops. Like I, I just no. It was so I funny just, though. I one two three. Yo, them. the I funniest didn't... part about this is when I look to the sure, left. There's, there's no no no. <laughs> people say that you yeah kicked him in the face while he was down and then took you your pants off and shit on his forehead. Hold on, hold on hold on. But it was like instant. Yeah, hold on, hold on, it was a no, reaction. No, no, no. Came out of my ass. I the didn't mean it. The best part was this. I swear to God, I hit him. Boom boom. He didn't throw any punches, right? I look up. The two security guards are like. Yo, you good? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. And they're like, they kicked him out. <laughs> Cause I was like, yeah, I'm good. Like I'm staying, I'm gonna stay right here. Yeah. Like they look in my eye kind of, yeah. they're like, okay, come on. You gotta get out of here, buddy. To the other guy, I swear to God, that was the funniest part. They kicked him out. And they looked at me like, nah, we're not kicking that guy out. Nah, he's good. I got, he's uh, fine. I got kicked out of one of Jake's uh, uh, fights afterwards. Um, me, it was in, I don't know where, it was the one where he fought Gibbs and my camera guy got lippy with the security guard. And I was like, yo, don't get... This is in Miami. No, it was, yes. Oh my God, I was there. Bro. Wait, I, wait, yeah. Yeah, so some guys got in a fight. Then he grabbed him back. Oh, oh, bro. He was recording the security guard. Mm -hmm. And the security guard goes, hey, I told you not to record. And he looked just like some other guy that he told. Because they all look the same, bro. Yeah. And he's like... Dude, I told you not to record. And I literally saw his face. And he was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And he goes, you never fucking said shit. And I was like, why I remember this whole thing. That? Why wouldn't you just say like, oh, okay. And then just put the fucking camera away. The guys, you're looking up. The rule is you look up, you look down. Immediately, <laughs> that's how it goes. He goes, blah, blah, blah. Bro, I'll never forget this. He fucking whoop, grabbed his neck, picked him up. I was like, oh, 
Oh, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grabbed him so hard. His, and then the other guy grabbed him too. His jacket was ripping. That's oh how bad God. they were pulling him. And I was like, yo, what do I do right now? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yo, I got to get the camera. <laughs> because like that way uh, we could sue them. If he like hurts him, mm -hmm. I have evidence because yeah. he's recording. I'm like, that's what my mind was. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just pull out your phone? I don't know. Because okay. you just heard where his I, mind I was. I'm not, dude, I was in the middle of it. I know, I know. I hear you. So I, I was like, you. yo, yo. And also, I wanted the footage of my blog. And I was like, I was like, yo, I can't let him take that shit. So, uh, so he goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part, dog. I fucking love that shit. So I was oh. like, no, fuck this. So I ran up, bro. And this is, this is dead ass what I did. I was like, all right, I have 30 seconds to remove the SD card. Right, so I ran up, like jumped a, up in the air, mission. grabbed the security guard, pushed him off while grabbing my camera, started <laughs> sprinting. I was sprinting and I was like undoing the fucking thing. I got it. Listen, this is how I knew I was good at acting, right? I got, I busted around the corner, took it out of my pocket. I was like, oh, they didn't, they didn't find me. I was like, I'm gone. I had the SD card here, had the camera in my hand here. All of a sudden, a dude as big as you, bro, <laughs> picks me up. And I was like, all right, the art of confusion. <laughs> so, so I put the SD card in my pocket and I was like, all right, at least I got the SD card. Maybe I can get out of there all together. So I turned to the guy and I go, can I help you? <laughs> and the guy goes, you know what you did? And I was like, and then so I, I literally took a beat and I was like, are you fucking pranking me, dude? What the fuck's <laughs> happening here? And the guy literally just sets me back down while staring at me. Because it was the other security guard that told him to go get me. Mm -hmm. So he thought he got the wrong dude. For oh a split my second. God. Seen you yet. You fucking so I looked at him and I go, I go, what are you doing, dude? And he goes, come with me. I go, okay, where are you, where are you taking me? He goes, stay right here. And I was like, oh right. my I God, like, you bet, clever. Bet. I turned, I was about to turn and start busting out running and the dude busted around the corner. He goes, no, that's him. Grab him. Grab him. And he goes, oh, you fucking got me. And he said that. He wanted to take him. Oh, you fucking got me. Uh, and we're right back in. Pick me up. And then so like, dude, now we're face to face. Like he's picking me up. And I was like, yeah, but I got you. Dog, I wish this was on camera. This shit is so Bro, funny. I was like, yeah, but I got you though. And he really did one of these. Because he, he didn't want to laugh. He did one of these. He goes, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I got your bitch ass. And then they just threw us out, and then nothing. They didn't, they didn't beat us up or anything. But I, th oh, I thought man. I was going to get rocked. So you wouldn't even do a fight on a friendly, cordial, just like you and your homie, like, arguing a boxing no, card. Like if you got to fight, you got to fight. Oh, Bro, okay. I, I, don't, I don't know. I grew up fighting so much. I, like, we were such stupid fucking kids growing up. Have you ever heard of a backyard boogie? Like, you would go and put, like, 20 bucks in some dude's hat in a backyard of, like, Phoenix, Arizona in the ghetto. And then you would literally knuckle fight people one at a time. And whoever won that tournament just got a hat full of money. Oh, my God. We had fight I never got similar, the hat. but. <laughs> <laughs> I never got the hat. But, bro, I, like, that's why when people are like, bro, you're not scared. Because, like, if you ask Logan, we've been in some, some crazy situations. You won't see me flinch. Because the rule is, bro, you could probably fuck me up. I've been fucked up, though. Ain't no surprise to get it knocked out. I've been here before. Yeah. You're going to have to fuck me up. If not. I'm gonna fuck you, you up. You seem scrappy. You seem scrappy. Bro, like, very, I, like you know, I, I like did so much martial arts growing up. I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I did Krav Maga for a little bit. Yep. I did. Uh, I did Taekwondo. I did boxing. I did mm -hmm. uh, Muay Thai. So uh, you're good on on the ground up all I, that. I am and really fucking respectfully. Good. You are probably one of the smaller guys in yep, your group. Yep, I'll sneak into I, your I bitch. Just, you won't even know. know. Exactly. <laughs> sure. Exactly. So, Yo. but you're, that means you're a target. Like you know, a lot of men will just be like, "Oh, the small guy. Let me fuck with him." All like, you gotta do as a Middle Eastern, if there's a lot of you, just go. And <laughs> then they just fucking start running. <laughs> they just start yeah. running. No, I need better <laughs> advice. All right, I got I a light little them, brother. Like, you want this? And then they bring their friends. I go. <laughs> and I was like, all right, oh, just oh in God. case. Yo, yo, yo. So, so, okay. Probably, do I have to cut that? Is that no, that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. I don't bro. know, bro. People are <laughs> sensitive nowadays. No, that is, no, fuck that. Do that's you hilarious. you beat them up if they cancel me? Yeah, I got it, bro. I fucking, just every I house? I, bro, I just want to subscribe. <laughs> yep. I'll fucking go door to door for that shit, bro. Straight up. Fuck that. No, you but can't like, cancel I, for that, bro. That's is a that good your, ass joke. Yeah. What but is that your experience being the smaller guy? Like, that you get picked on more? Because I have a little brother and he's not the tallest in his group and he feels like he you know gets a little bit singled out because people think he can fuck with them and they can't i don't know people just fucked with me because they didn't like me oh, <laughs> they right. doing well, that hold on hold on speaking the smaller guy yeah 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 logan or jake who's gonna are they gonna fight i don't think they're gonna fight never i think they do it it's like the biggest like, fight I, though i think they would do it later 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 in their life can it, you say who you think would win that's what i want to know <sighs> right now oh uh, i mean i know that answer right now 
I know that answer right now. Logan, I I, right? I, I don't no, know, bro. No. Jake? I, I, really? I, I right know. now? I don't know. So here's the thing, bro. Like, no, no. His hand's broken right now. Oh, no, not right now. So here's like, not, not that like that. Uh, I'm talking about like if they're both healthy. Okay. I think they're both dogs in their own ways. But the one thing that I will, I will say is like, I was watching Logan train for Mayweather and I was watching the way he was bodying these dudes, bro. When I watched him fight in getting ready for KSI, I don't know. It's not looking good for you, bro. <laughs> like, it's like, you're not the guy. Like as much as you want to be the guy, you're not the guy. <laughs> But then he got it. He like started understanding and really training. Yeah. And bro, I'm watching dudes that are like award-winning boxers. Are you just getting smacked to the canvas? And I'm like, oh, okay. He's the guy now. But after Mayweather, people are like, oh, I don't know. But it's like, bro, he fought fucking Mayweather and he yeah. still lasted. But he's so much bigger. Bro, bro but he, Mayweather fought bigger people. And Jake, are they like if you were to see them online and then because online, uh, I'm sorry, Jake Paul, so, you're kind of an asshole online. I don't know you in real life, don't know who you are. I'm just saying online, you just seem like someone I wouldn't. How does get along how, with. to you? How does Logan look online? I've never watched any of Logan stuff other really? than yeah, I've never watched a lot of Logan stuff. Got it. Logan Logan matured so much. I don't even want to make this about Logan. This is about bro, you. Bro, right I'm now. so glad that shit happened though. Like, yeah. <laughs> like people are like, dude, the Japan thing. I'm like, thank God, bro. Like, that guy was an asshole before. Yo, yo, yo. I mean, he he literally like. He was a different person. Dude, I don't know if anybody notices, but we weren't even fucking tight around that time. Bro, he got like so fucking big for the world. But like, like respectfully, bro, he was young and he was so fucking rich and famous that it's like at what point you can't tell the kid to do anything. No, no. You it can't. Felt, you also, like hold on. Numb. You he also can't know. expect someone to know exactly how to move at that age in that also, way. Also, I have to admit something. Dude's a robot. Like, I mean it. The dude's a fucking robot. Like, emotionally? Like, no, no oh. emotions. Like, that guy's like, oh, bro, like, if, if, if he knows that you're, like, for example, I'm his best friend, right? Like, if anything at any term happened that he needs me, I'll be on the phone. But if for one second he found out that I was bad for him in any way, oh, I'll be out. Because he knows how to separate his emotions from his work. I'm telling you, when I watch this dude work, it's like watching Steve Jobs work or watching, like, somebody at, at a legendary level work, when I watch him unfold his plans in front of me, I get goosebumps. I go, what the fuck, bro? Like this guy is a hundred steps ahead of your, of your idol. Like he's, the way he could approach something and, and, and he'll look at it in a perspective that me, you, and five other guys together will never be able to underhand. And then he'll flip it and then he'll explain it to us and then we're all like, oh, fuck. I like that he explains it to you though, that he shares that. He's the most giving human being you'll ever met. Wow, that's cool. He's the most, he does things, like you know how people in vlogs uh, will do things and then they'll vlog it. 90% of the things he does for his and his friends will never vlog. He'll just do it because he loves us. And that's why I always put him on and I always tell people that's where I came from and shit like that because I'm proud of him. Absolutely. Yeah. But as like a viewer, I mean, I wouldn't know. And yeah. Yeah. What about Jake? Jake, so <laughs> Jake's cat, bro. He's all cat. He is acting like he's this dude who will tear somebody up but I promise you, bro, if you had to call somebody and he had to have somebody in your corner, that dude's all love. Like, that yeah. guy's smart. And I, and I secretly think, bro, like, it's killing him inside that he knows that this whole, like, version of himself is, that it is printing money. But, bro, like, I've had conversations with that dude where I'm like, the heart in your body right now is so much greater than people would ever understand. And that's why I think he has his girlfriend and his girlfriend could see past that shit or his fiance or wherever they're at right now. Wait, Jake has a Julia. girlfriend? Julia. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She, they got like, back together. I know nothing about anything yeah. apparently. And she's just an amazing human being too, bro. Like the way she loves him. A lot of people might think, uh, oh, she's there because he's like famous. But bro, she like deals with this shit and like puts it in front of him and she's like wifey. Like me and Logan look at her and be like, fuck, dude, Hell what a yeah. blessing. I'm glad he has someone like that in Damn. his corner. Like I yeah. don't know him, but it feels like he needs someone in his life that'll tell him how it is and oh, you know, yeah, yeah, out of yeah, love, yeah. you know, out of he care. Has a By the way, so he's always had phases of groups of people in his life and the people, his camp that he has now, bro, it's all love. <laughs> they like not only love him, bro, but like when I walk around, they love me just because they know that he loves me. Like the way that they, they, they approach each other and they give each other like, 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 uh, like room to grow and they don't like hold people accountable for their mistakes. It's like, oh damn, like you have a good group of people around you that are going to help you mentally yeah. develop into the adult that you are. I think both of them are in a perfect place in their life. And mind you, bro, these kids are so fucking young and so yeah. successful. I just want to know why Jake uh, blocked me from commenting on his Instagram. 
Oh, I don't know. You don't did know? you say, did you chirp at him? <laughs> Bro, but did I you chirp at him? Sometimes I chirp Why? at everyone. I chirp at everyone. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he probably didn't want to, you to ask him to box him or something. No, I don't think he was. A, I mean, I, I think he probably him. beat your ass. I'm just being honest. Like in a, in a boxing match. Yeah, I think so. Just so you, straight in up. In MMA, fuck no. No, but you just sit on him. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Both of them are they're in, a, in a very, very great place, and they're both growing and they're both learning. They still have a lot more to learn and grow. But dude, the 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 life, dude. I've known them for eight years, and I've watched them. And what in eight years, I'm like, oh, like, dude, you guys are like eighty at heart. Mm -hmm. Like they've gone through shit, bro. Yeah. There's things that Jake has gone through that he's never talked about in the media that I've watched, and I know that if I went through that, I would I would fucking be out. I'll be so out. I'll be done, and I'll be a, such a shit person. But he like they have some. I mean, it makes sense. The it way they were they were raised, bro, was different. Like they, shout out Pam. Pam and Greg. Greg, yep. Greg did a lot too. A lot of people like don't put that into consideration, but the whole family is like fucking crazy to see on camera. You're like, what the fuck? And trust me, there's times in real life I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? But at the end of the day, like they're uh, a very, very, very teammates type of family. 100%. Yeah. See, but it's like beautiful. as someone who like me who is not involved in this, I like I'm just like a viewer at this point. Um, it's interesting to hear that perspective because we just kind of see what you guys put out on the internet. So it's like in my head. Logan and Jake have a little bit of beef and there's like, you know, they're both crazy and Jake's kind of an asshole and Logan's a little bit like the more mature brother and that's just kind of how it's portrayed out here. But then like hearing you guys speak about these people and speak about just content mm. creators in general, how you guys kind of do have to put up a facade and play a character and behind the scenes, like it's not who you are and maybe not who with the content you want to create anymore, but it's what's bringing in the likes. I have a, I have a story that actually might shine a, a different view on, on Jake. I've never actually said it <clears throat> because it wasn't my proudest moment. But I'll, I'll fucking throw myself under the bus. I'm a good guy now. Uh, not that I was ever a bad guy, by the way. But you know, like when you get somewhat successful, like right at the beginning, you kind of have like this cocky stage of your like. Oh yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Of course. A lot of a lot of people online won't understand that, but it's just kind of like when you're in Hollywood and you and you get a taste of fame, <clears throat> you built this persona to you because you think that's how you should act now, and mine came crushing down so quick and so fast. And uh, I'll never forget this. We were, it was me, Alyssa, Jake. Alyssa Violet. Alyssa Violet and yeah. a few of the Team 10 members and we're walking. <clears throat> and this Was this kid, when he was dating her? This is when we were at 1600. I don't know if they were dating. Okay. I, and I knew they were all teammates though. <clears throat> and uh, this kid ran up to Jake and he was like shaking. Um, didn't know who we were, right? But again, the people that are not even killing it were the cockiest ones. That's how it always goes, right? The people oh my that God, are like, yeah. So we're in our, our fuck boy and fuck girl stage where we're like all hot shit. And this dude was like shaking. He was nervous. And he was talking to Jake. He's like, Jake, I know you're busy. But uh, uh, and my, and mind you, we all kept walking. Because it was at this point where we were like, oh, dude, we heard this story a thousand times. We're just trying to get home. We're not trying to do this right now. Yeah. And like Jake, a random guy. A random guy Got on the street it. right before we get into the house. Yeah. We're all sick of it. And this guy gets it more than anybody and their mother. And he stops and he sits there and he listens to everybody, everything he says. And then he takes his card because he's like, oh, I want to shoot this thing. I have an idea. And uh, so we go upstairs and I'm not going to mention who in the group was talking ill. They're like, oh, fuck that kid. Like, like what, what is he going to give us that we don't already know? Because he's like, I can help you guys do this. And we took it as an insulting, like, oh, you think we don't know what the fuck we're doing? Yeah. And uh, we walk in and he goes, could you guys all do me a, a, a tiny favor and shut the fuck up? He goes, I don't know when the fuck you guys got so big headed and such shit. Like you guys, you guys are all stupid as fuck. And he turns to me and he goes, and you out of all people, he goes, who the fuck are you to say that that guy is something? He goes, cause weren't you sucking Logan's dick to get into this group? He's like, didn't you want him to hear you out? He's like, but now you're too big and mighty. He goes, you're never going to get success cause you don't deserve it. And I was like, whoa, he goes, don't ever look down on somebody. And he just fucking goes into his room. And I was like, fuck. And I didn't even come with that much disrespect. I just had like a few questions, right? But he like shit on me, bro. Yeah. Like hard shit on me. And that shit stuck with me. So now when people like talk to me, I like I hear them out. I listen to every word they say. Because it humbled the fuck out of me. But that story of Jake, you'll never hear. Exactly. You'll and never that, hear. that person you'll never see. I would never in a million years, if you gave me a multiple choice test, say, oh yeah, Jake Paul did that one. Yeah. Jake Paul did that. Never. I would cross that one off first on the list. Um, process of elimination. Let that one go. You know, because I, oh, he's just an asshole. But like. I mean, that's this in general. Like this social media is like you, you see what people put out. And obviously sometimes as a creator, you have to put out what you know people are going to engage with. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Um, like I said, I'll make videos all the time that I'll stand in front of, a, front of a dumpster and talk about my life and I know they're not viral and I know it's not going to get the most engagement because people are going to click and be like, I don't want to hear this guy talk about his life because they rather see the girl with the fat ass me lift her or do some stupid shit on a I fucking... I that's why you do that. I'm saying... I'm I'm, no, straight up. Like that's... That, I know what they want but like the thing that's going to help that person the most or the thing that might benefit them the most... Or, or give fulfill them the, you. Yeah, or give them the most perspective is not always going to be the content that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. So as a creator, you know that and you try and pick obviously I've tried over years to like do as much as I can of both at the same time trying to find the balance of like okay I know I need to get views and engagement mm -hmm. otherwise let's say imagine imagine you cast a net right <clears throat> you cast this big ass net with viral video lifting mm -hmm. the chick on the thing or whatever mm -hmm. squatting the girls benching the girls right you cast this giant net and you and you capture like a million fish all those views right mm -hmm. versus like you you cast a net that's like much much smaller because you know it's not getting as far so the point is this right i tried to cast like a big ass net to get everyone to look and then some of those fish some of those people will be like we'll try to find out more about me or about what mm -hmm. you know about myself or my life or whatever and maybe they stumble on that video where it's like yo this is what happened to me when i was this and this is what happened to me and how i learned and how i grew from it mm -hmm. but like i always knew i had to cast a big net to get as many people as possible i just think situations like this obviously there's so many probably for you that you've, you've had probably interactions with people that were yeah. super genuine and super real yeah. for that person. And all these other creators that people will just never hear of. Like I have them all the time, like damn near like every day at my gym mm -hmm. that I'm not even filming. Sure. I filmed some here though. I'll be like, yo, Kevin, or sorry, Kevin at the time when he filmed or um, Jacob now, like go grab the camera and film this for me. But like there is thousands of conversations I have where there's no camera and it's just like that where I talk to the person who's like, Hey, how do I do this? Or how do I mm -hmm. succeed in this fitness or succeed on YouTube? And the thing is, like, it's just not that simple. What you see on the internet is not that person's whole life. Like, it's of just course. not how it goes. Of Logan at a gym? Yeah. What gym? Because it wasn't zoo culture. Bro, zoo culture? That's too expensive. Oh, <laughs> wow. Why would you do me dirty? And they like always that? push merch. As soon as I walk in, I'm like, bro, I'm trying no, to work no, out. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> You're assaulted because you got kicked out of there once. <laughs> yeah, they kicked me out. I was like, dude, I, I, I'm friends That's with the owner. They're like, yeah, buddy, we heard that before. Yeah, everyone says that. Everyone says that. Why'd they kick you out? No, no, no. Because he, he what were you doing? You were filming something with oh, the, I thought the it was diaper funny. guy? So there's a fan that showed up to my house. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He showed up to my gym and said, mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge you first. He did. Yeah, he wanted to challenge me to basketball. So I had to beat that ass. Of course. He and smoked I, him in basketball. Should, and then I made him show up back to Bradley's house mm -hmm. or his gym in diapers. Only diapers. Oh, yeah, he did. He no. did. No, but he was uh, he he wanted. He was down it. for no, it. He, he was, wanted he to. He was vlogging it. It was. Oh, I'm sure he was so down for it. No, no, it. he was, yeah, he was literally cool filming a YouTube video. He wanted yeah. to do it. But like a grown ass man in a diaper makes yes. me sad. Yeah, <laughs> and then he, he was in there doing that, and they were like, "Yo, what the fuck you doing in here, Danny?" Kicked him out because like he didn't. Know. I saw him today, and I was like, "Oh, nice haircut." And he's like, "Oh, you recognize me?" And I was like, "Dude, Aww. yeah, you Danny's kicked me out, you best fucking bitch." No, I was kidding. No, Danny, <laughs> he's doing his job. He's been there since Danny's, day one. Bro. He is my Danny's best amazing. friend of all time. Yeah, I've seen him. I, he's been there for a long time, and I always the only time I picture when I close my eyes, I picture him with his straight hair long, <laughs> yeah, and his Superman shirt, Jack Dora. <laughs> That's the only time I can Jack see him. Jack Dora. <laughs> Jack Dora. I love Danny. Man. He's, he's a such cool a good guy. dude. So, what gym did you meet him at, though? Actually, Logan Paul. Uh so. Randomly enough, this has to do with religion. Oh, no. Wait, how does a gym have we're, to do with religion? We're circling back, my friend. Jesus Christ. Buckle up, guys. Yo. We're in Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Yo. be a bumpy fucking That's ride. fucking horrible, bro. We're fucking too close. And to we're fucking... charging you for everything, <laughs> yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Including his membership, Bob. Yeah, we're like fucking this close to the fucking chair in front of him. Have you ever been in Spirit, actually? Yeah, I just recently wrote okay, one. it's bad, dude. Let's yeah. not make this a spirit uh, Brand podcast. deal? No, not a spirit airline okay, podcast. So, <laughs> buckle up. Uh, I, uh, you got to pay for the seatbelt, though. That's extra. Yeah. That was like a little moan you just did there. Did you like it? You said extra. Did you like I it? I loved it. Okay, That's why good. I called attention to it. Wow. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Continue talking about God. Go on. <laughs> I saw the thing in her eye again. I saw the thing <laughs> in her eye again. It became right. a heart again. Uh, so it was right around when I moved. It was like four four months into me living there. Uh, I had a girlfriend yeah. at the time. Eight years ago, I had a girlfriend. And uh, she broke up with me, but in the craziest <laughs> way ever, bro. I, we used to fall asleep on FaceTime together every night. Oh, that's Whoa, I, that's cute as fuck. Yeah, every night, bro. Every night we'd fall asleep. And uh, dude, you know what she looked like? She Ooh. looked like Mila Kunis and Selena Gomez put together. Wow. 
Where's she? That at? sounds amazing. Bro, and I and I got what's her, her work. I was gonna say, guys. can I get that too? Yeah, what's I was flipping <laughs> burgers and getting that. Let's go. Let's go. I fucking love that. No, Let's get a like, model since day one, it baby. Makes sense. You yeah. you have you treat women well. I can already tell you treat oh. women well, and that matters. Like more than anything, that fucking matters. It's very hard to find a man where you just like feel confident in that relationship. I, like I tell them, I go, yo, listen, it's like be a gentleman until that bedroom door's locked. Facts, absolutely, and then fucking disrespect her. But disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, Slap her up a little bit, absolutely. Know? Choke her a little bit. Okay, back to the. Oh, I'm just saying. Thing, I... Just spit in her mouth, punch her in the eye. <laughs> no, give her the her. panda, come never one eye, fans. give her a black whoa, 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 eye, another whoa. one. What the fuck, man? <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. What? Never, never. Do the Donkey fans. Kong where Steve will no. do will be hiding in the <laughs> closet, will come out and kick her in the fucking jaw. Never, what the ever fuck? close fist, my guy. Never, never. Oh my gosh, Why? Jesus. It's okay what? if she says it's okay. No, definitely we're not. We're skipping no, no, no. through that one right now. Yeah, we gotta now. skip through that. I can't that even one, be in the frame with that we're one. We're skipping because no, there's that's a that's a. Oh no, oh, no don't do that. Podcast saying he beat women. women. I go what? Don't do that. Don't do that. But I mean, consent is key. If you have consent and you're comfortable, do whatever you want. That's all I'm saying. So I'm in my apartment, <laughs> and uh, uh, I wake up, and uh, I used to call her Pookie. Pookie. Yeah. So I wake up. I was like, oh, good morning, Pookie. That's cute, too. And uh, I turn over, and she's, like, fully dressed. Wait, wait, wait. What'd she call you? She, That's, I uh, gotta know now. Well, at the end, she called me asshole. <laughs> okay, no, no. But you didn't have a nickname, like, Pookie? No. I, I, gave, I gave her Pookie, and she... Uh, I don't know if she called She me. called you Daddy. We'll leave it at that. Come she on. She called me Daddy. Okay, not that much, though. She called Daddy. Okay. Ew. <laughs> she was, like, Ew, Indian and Mexican. That's so much. <laughs> 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 she, so I was like, Pookie, she's like, yes, Daddy. Um... No, I yawned, I turned over, and she's like fully dressed. That's and bad. I'm like, Why are you up so early? <laughs> and she's like, yo, we need to talk. And I was, I was like, okay. And she's like, uh, I'm leaving you. And Whoa. I was like, yo. I, and that was the only good thing I got going on for me, bro. That I remember, mind you, I was flipping burgers. <laughs> Previously, I was, I, was, I was jobless. I was working at an internship uh, where I'm not going to say the studio because that's fucked up. Okay. I'm like East West. And uh <laughs> perfect. And, Fuck them. And uh, the the studio guy was like, "Yo, Justin Bieber walked in and he goes uh the I don't remember the technician is like a, an assistant technician and this guy was an asshole to me." And Justin Bieber walked in and I went to go say hi to see if he remembered me cuz I performed at his concert. And uh so I went to go say hi and he goes, Oh, that's Justin Bieber. You don't say hi to Justin. He goes, you go back to cleaning the toilet. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. So like, this, oh, was my, this was my life around the time, right? And uh, so she leaves me and I'm like, dude, she's just being like dramatic right now because I was in a toxic relationship where breaking up and getting back together was like normal. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, this is, I'll just take a shower. By the time I'm done showering, she'll be good. I come back and uh, I call her number. It's like, boo doo doo. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, this girl changed her number? I go, what did I do? I didn't do anything, right? And so I was like, oh my God, this is fucking crazy. Um, and I called my mom and dad and I started crying. I was like, yo, I need to get a ticket back home right now. I got to go meet her. I fly back to uh, Arizona, go to her house, completely abandoned. <gasps> what the fuck is going on? Wait, this bro, is just, fucking just, tripping me out right just now. Just wait, bro. Like I go to her house. There, she doesn't live there anymore. I talked to her mom. This is the next day? Like how far? Bro, the same day. I, I, the I, same day? I flew the same day. Okay, this is So weird. I'm Whoa. like, I, I'm there. Her mom's like, she's not here. I was like, well, then where's she at? And then like, I'm trying to find her. Like, can't find her. She's gone. No number, no address. I don't know what the fuck's happening. So um, I, I cry a little bit more. Start crying. I take uh, the flight back home. And then I, the next day I get up, but I have like nobody to wake up to. And I have, and bro, like, let me paint you a picture of how lonely I was. I would go to the grocery store to pretend that I was shopping. Holy so I, shit. So I this could just deep. talk to people. That's fucking deep. I've done that. I yeah. did that when I moved to LA. I was though. so lonely. Wow. And, uh, I would go to, not the grocery, I would go to Target. You know my best friend now, his name's Greg, the one who wrote my movie with me? He's the, like, he manages an apartment building. And I literally made him become my best friend. I found out all of his favorite desserts and shit like that and I would always make them around the same time he was coming Aww. in. So like I prepped that shit. It was fucked up, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I, Lonely as fuck. And one day I went grocery shopping to talk to everybody. And I was like, you know what? I'll just cook myself and be, I started to pick up shit to like do shit yeah. to make myself happier. And, uh, my apartment was half of this, uh, bedroom. It was a tiny apartment. Right. Mm -hmm. And all my, uh, furniture were from like 
Target or something cheap. There were or like nothing... Letgo. I like that's. I was really poor when I first moved to LA. I would get stuff yeah. off Letgo or Facebook Marketplace so I, and stuff. Yeah, I was only here for an internship, so my mom and dad are like, "Yo, we're not dumping money mm-hmm. into your place, bro. Like, you're gonna make this." And uh, I made myself a meal, and I turned on Friends, and I was like, "Oh, like, life's good." And I, like, I put my meal, and my table broke, nice. and it shattered the meal that I made <laughs> for like an hour. Nice. Mm-hmm. Bro, it's a great story. Blacked out. I took the thing and I fucking smacked it against the TV, took the TV off the wall, threw it at the fucking, uh, uh, the, what are the? Sliding glass door? Or? Yes. For, but it wasn't glass. It was like the cheap wood thing for my closet. Busted that shit. It didn't break. Then I kicked it, broke it in. Then I broke like my bed frame. Like I, I broke everything in the house. Anger. And I literally sat there and there's literally not one thing in my house that's like working. Yeah. And I was like crying, bro. And, and this was at the point in my life where I was like, all right, great. I have a dead end job that I hate that I'm not even getting paid for. My girl just left me. This dream of coming to LA is not happening. How old were you? What age was this? 21, 22. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, bro, like I'm, I'm not, I haven't gone to college. I didn't do anything. Like what the fuck am I doing with my life? And I just started crying and crying and crying. And then I remembered my mom would tell me, she was like, you know what? Like during these things, you could either listen to the devil or you could listen to God. But in these times of life, you have to really dig deep and be that good Christian and do what God wants you to and do. God told you to go to the gym. So I washed my face and in my heart. That's, that's me too. Bro. It's full circle. <laughs> Jesus I told Christ. you. I looked you in the eyes. I go, dude, God just wants us God to work out. <laughs> so I'm washing my face and I'm crying and in my heart. Dead ass. My, it was 10 minutes before the gym closes too. That's how wild the, it listen, was. Listen, the gym is one of the best places in the world. I just want that to be known to everybody Which for so gym many do you, things. do you go to the most? Well, I go to my gym the most, but regardless... Regardless though, like any gym, just having that in your life is so fucking important. Not just physically how you look, but yeah. how you feel, how your it's, brain functions. It, it really changes my day if I don't work out. Yeah. 100% It's agree. essential for me. 100% essential. Agree. So uh, 10 minutes before it closes, I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, I'm just going to go. I'm like, I'm just going to go to the gym. So I go to the gym and I'm literally lifting the weights. And I remember, I, I remember specifically, I lifted it up and I was like, mm. what am I going to do? I was like, oh, I'll just do biceps. <laughs> of course. Minutes. Perfect. Perfect. 10 minutes. It's a good choice. Right? I lift and I just see Logan stretching on the bench thing. And I was like, oh, that's that dude from Vine. Yeah. So I walked up to him, bro. And I gave him like the worst fucking like, yo, you should use me in your videos because I could dance. I could act. And I literally pull out my phone. I start playing music to him. And it was the most cringe fucking thing you could ever do. I was literally pulling out my music video. And I was like, yo, watch. Dude. Oh my and God. I leave him pull the back. I'm like, You've no, you got like, big old balls on you. Bro, the biggest balls. And... And he literally was like not grossed out, which dude, you would, anybody that you come up to and grabs you and like, yo, you should watch it. You're like, all right, he's up tiger, right? Yeah. Anybody. He's never, ever given his number to anybody. And he says, dude, there was something in my heart to like give you my number and to hang out with you. And so then we hung out the next day mm. and I called my mom. I was like, mom, there's this thing called Vine. And like, I yeah. think you could do this. So then I went and we became friends and I never was like, yo, I want to be social media famous. I, I didn't think that's how it worked. Right. I thought he's either you were or you weren't. I didn't think you could build your way up to it. So I was just like watching him do all these things. And he even told me, he's like, yo, you should, you're really fucking good at acting, bro. You should like try this shit. And I just tried it. So like, I li- like it was at my lowest point. And you know, it's so funny. And I never told this to anybody, but my dad called me that day and he says, if you're out, let me know. I'll buy your ticket right now. You can come home. So I think God and the devil are standing at a, at a roadway and they're like, yo, either come with me and I could have gone back to Arizona and lived this lifestyle that I probably would have hated and regretted for the rest of my life and listened to the devil or I could have listened to God in my darkest point and be like all right fuck it let me just try this one more time yeah and uh change my life I, I always think back at that day like I, I it was literally like I either go home or I go to the gym for 10 minutes it's beautiful man yeah like you want to hear about the porn uh not porn uh, what you want to hear about uh uh the girl who left me though Wait, yes, how, yes. Do, how, how do we get to porn? <laughs> wait for it. Uh, oh, shit. Wait for it. But real fast, before we move on, that is so hard to walk up to people like you did to Logan and just be like, hey, I'm going to put myself out there right now. Let's see how that goes. That's fucking hard. So good, I, I good on that. you. And I'm glad that worked out for you. I was a baby, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But yeah. also, everybody hated me. So I was like, there might be a chance he might like me. So like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, I, I have a very outward personality like that. And it's abrasive to some, most, but like some people really love it and really vibe yeah, with it. Yeah, it's either and they're no, really gonna love you or exactly. really hate you. Yeah, it's very, exactly. it's very there. It's, it's never in the though. middle. Exactly. Yeah, fuck it. Um, so years yeah. go by. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So that day, all that stuff happened. Never met Logan, to the girl again. Got the number. 
He, you guys, it, yeah. so you never talk to that girl. Never again. talk to that you, girl. So again. you, you're telling me how long, how long were you with her for? Oh, only a few months. Okay. Only a few months, but it was like puppy love. So right? she was, was like definitely like a love. prostitute or something. Love. It sounds like it. She was like a girl who she did something crazy on the Nah, no, 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 no. We're not going to throw that. Why would you think? Oh, because she bad, works dude. in the city. No, because you were talking about porn. You know what? You have a stigma that is gross. Am I wrong? Don't mock. I'm not mocking. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop. <laughs> you, you, you look like Scarlett Johansson. Hold on, you get hold mad on. sometimes, though. I look like Scarlett? Yeah. Oh, thank you. So that's No, no, because you got me going when you, when you said the porn thing. Yeah, let me That's finish. where you kind of got let me, me finish, off. Okay, bro. go ahead. So, this guy. Shaming women. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> and uh, so, years go by, bro, and I'm in my, like, full-blown douche state. Like douchebag mode, like full douchebag. Like you see me, you're like that guy's. How many years? Three years? Four years? No, full. No, no, no. Three years. Three years. But remember, three years in Hollywood is like ten years anywhere else. It's crazy. It's such a fast pace. Every single day, there's something happening. That three years, I swear, it feels like ten years. Yeah. So uh, it was right around the time where I just started getting popping. I got my check mark. I'm talking to girls. I'm doing my thing. And remind you, I used to get like pretty girls with just my personality. Now I'm like low key, like in the moment There's popping. There's money in there too. Bro, <laughs> throw money in there with personality and you yeah. put me in a room full of old deadbeats. Bro, I'm popping. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm popping. Yep. So I take, the, I take whatever the, the billionaires don't want. Okay. <laughs> the leftovers. The leftovers. <laughs> Still yeah, yeah. supermodels. And I see this girl and she's fucking gorgeous, bro. And I'm like, yo. Don't. Tonight, I'm going to. Okay. I'm gonna throw it, don't tell me there's no way this is the same girl. No, of course not. Okay. What, you think I'm fucking idiot? Uh, three years later, I have no idea. What kind of sitcom <laughs> movie is sorry, this? Sorry, sorry. Anyway, so. <laughs> Hey, so oh, I'm so sorry to hit you. It's all good. You're I'm trying so to hurt my knee. It's fine. I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> injured me. Take you out. The only way I can take out of get the fuck uh, out. We're in the car, bro. We're, the vibes are there, bro. We're just feeling each other. We're making now. We're just do, we're fooling around, and I'm like, for sure, this is happening. So she's like, your place or my place? And I was like, my place. Um, I was like, yo, let's get food. Oh, dude, this this gives oh, me goosebumps fuck. every time. So yo, let's get food. We're in the drive through. And a light, I'm, I'm making out with her. And I have both of my, because I'm, I'm a two-hander. I'm like, oh, nice. very nice, like, very just nice. Like, I got you, baby, don't worry about it. <laughs> and uh, I used to hold my girl like this. Okay. And so I'm holding her like this, and a car pulls around, and the light reflects, and the shadow hits her face. And it looks exactly like my ex. <laughs> and it literally blew a shotgun through my stomach. And I was like, whoa. I was like, oh, I can't. My dick was like, and it went. Nice. And I was oh like, bet, gosh. I can't. There's no way. My mm -hmm. heart broke. So I told her, I was like, you know what? My stomach's a little like hurting right now. I'm like, I'd love to take you out tomorrow. Like, I hate to I hate to be the guy. And so I dropped her off home. I go home and I'm like watching friends, trying to cheer myself up. And then I'm like, I feel better. After watching Joey Tribbiani make mm -hmm. some how you doing? Like, yeah, I'm got like, you got you back. I got yeah. me back. And I'm okay. like, yo, what the fuck's wrong with me? This Men dumb so bitch. Easy. Like, I gotta fucking <laughs> I gotta get this shit going. So I text her, she doesn't text back. Call her, doesn't call. I was like, fuck. She went to bed. So what does a man do when... Calls his uh, ex. No. Porn, porn. Like, oh, I don't have porn. porn. I don't this have makes her. sense now. Okay. Porn. <gasps> and I go to the popular page because I'm not the type of guy that like looks up like famous So she was a sex worker. Is this where this is going? She's on the porn thing? She does this cou couch casting thing, bro. So I was not wrong. Okay. Love it. Fuck it. I called I it, it right. Bro. I called the story. You tried to fucking hang me. <laughs> fuck you. Okay, go ahead. So I'm weeping, bro. I'm like, there's no fucking way. What? There's no way. And oh she's like, I'm looking at her and I'm like, there's no fucking way. And I'm like, like, by the way, I'm like, just to paint you the picture, I'm fully naked. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. underneath the cover and I'm looking and I literally bring the laptop closer to me. I'm like, <laughs> what? I go, there's no way. And I click it and bro, like, it, like, like this. I'm just watching. I'm like, I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, Ooh. There's no way. Wait. Bro, 48 minutes, 36 seconds. Oh, the timestamp. I'm the sitting time here and I'm like. So I, I copy it and I send it to Jake, Logan, Mark. No oh, Mark. response from none of them. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh my God. I go to Logan's house and I'm broken, bro. I'm like crying. I so wait, she was doing casting couch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, like, like the lowest you could go at it. 
like oh where they God. like the POV. Like she where... probably made like six hundred bucks doing this. And wow. so I'm like, damn, bro, like, like just fucked me up. I come back, open up the door to my loving friends, and they're all smiling at me. And they go, guess what we just did? And they just high five each other. I go, did you guys just jerk off to my ex girlfriend? They go, oh. fuck yeah, we did, man. We gotta get you past that shit. <laughs> Yo. And then Jake walks up and he goes, you guys are fucking heartless. And he literally gives me a hug. Aww, Jake's the only fuck. one that didn't jerk off to my ex-girlfriend. Wow. Oh, good job, Jake. Yeah, but Jake's damn. looking really fucking good you in this can't. podcast, He's bro. looking really good. He's looking really fucking good. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to end it here, though. It's three hours and six minutes. Holy fuck. No, it's not. Three hours and what? Three hours and what? We just, yo, run this. Yeah. Run this wait, right wait, now. Wait, 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 wait. Three hours and no- what? Three hours and 16 minutes. Three hours and 16 minutes. <laughs> Yo, don't talk about me crying like that. It's <laughs> fucked up. Yes, yeah, fucked up, bro. The guy opened what? up. I'm so glad that that happened. Like, don't talk men about are me allowed crying. to have emotions. Don't, don't, what don't the fucking fuck? make this about me crying for so long, bro. Bro, oh, first of all, there's no way we just did fucking three hours and twenty minutes on yeah, this podcast. Yeah, we did, man. Yeah. Crazy. Hey, we're okay. How long was the the part we're cutting out though? Is that like sixteen oh, minutes? That's like, no, that's like ten minutes. Ten minutes. Really? Yeah, that was that was not short. Holy you fuck. preaching the gospel? Hour and a half. Bro, that's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You guys asked me. Yeah. Hey, no, I, I think love that her, was dude. a productive. She's the best. No, she's dope. Yeah, no, she is. She's but dope. that conversation, otherwise, I, I learned a lot during this conversation. I did need like, that. I learned the part a lot. that we cut out, I would like three years ago would love that shit to be in. It's just if it didn't take my career. No, right no, don't me. worry, don't worry. See, and like I, 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 that's something I don't understand. So it's like. Like I just I say whatever like you should see my TikTok. We're gonna have a co- me and her. <laughs> uh, I, I've been on a few podcasts in my life, and I swear I'm saying this with all of me, all of the confidence. She's the best co-host <laughs> you'll ever have. Yep. Thank you, I appreciate That's it. That's why I picked her, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> no. You think I'm an idiot? No, this is the most fun filming I've had. Like genuinely, fuck yes, yeah. we're gonna yeah. kill comedy. Like you are going to. Thank kill you it. so much. Run it up, baby. We're out of here. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Check George Woo. out. Yo, how often you post? By the way, before we. Um, I post two times a week Twice on a my week. main channel and then we're posting like two times on my reaction channel and then come visit impulsive. If you guys ever want to watch second best podcast in the world, the, the first the, he's lying <laughs> and no am- announcements you want to make nothing cool coming up for you or anything uh, you want to no, say, but I would take the time to say that if you by any chance are going through something, uh, I hope that you are going to get to a better day and I'm praying for you. And if you want to see the way that I see the world, just dabble in, uh, talking to God. I love it. Thank you, man. I appreciate your time. Cool.